jump on that really fast. Oh, shit. You are a hug. Oh, wait, I've got a new, new thumbnail for this. Right. Uh, Turbo Bridge. Copy. Nice to know what the hell I was doing. Oh, oh shit. What? All right, everybody, welcome to. Wait, are this we act, we week. actually doing this? Are we live? Are we doing this? Yes, we're live now because the intro ended and now it's time to start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're screwing around with the phones. This is how it goes, y'all, when it's just me and Mark. <laughs> yeah, without anyway. without Peanut, without our producer, we are... Um... The song ended and I didn't... I hope it wasn't too long, you guys. I don't think it was. See, I didn't know there was an intro play. Yeah, I, I, I try to put a little intro song so you know that we're always have a little buffer time before the stream starts for people to come in and join up, join up to the yep. stream. So welcome everybody. Welcome to the nine year anniversary of flat earth clues. <laughs> Good job, Mark. With Thank you. Yay. Yay! Insert With applause Mark. noise here. Yay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So nine years ago today in 2015, I created the very first Flat Earth Clues part one. Well, actually, it was the introduction to it, just called Flat Earth Clues Introduction, and uh, which was 12 minutes and 36 seconds long. And officially, wow, yeah, there it is. It just changed it today. So it's it says nine years ago. Wow. Yeah. Nine years, almost a decade. So next year, we're going to have to have a big shebang. It'll be a whole decade. Uh, you know, for me, well, okay, f okay. First, you're making some big assumptions. First, you're, you're thinking that 2024, we're gonna go from A to Z, and everything's gonna be perfectly fine. Which, <laughs> which come on, I have my doubts at, at this stage. I really, really do. Um, but for me, nine has always been a better number than ten. I mean, I know ten in the metric system, and you know, it's a nice, clean number. And everyone does, you know, like 10 in your anniversary and 20 year anniversary. But for me, nine is, a, you know, I'm kind of a numerology guy. You know that. And mm -hmm. so nine is a big, bigger number for me. Three by three. You know, and three, because three, 333 is my favorite number. And if you add those up, they equal nine. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's really cool for me because when I go into the clues on my channel, it says Flat Earth Clues Introduction. And it says nine years ago. And but part but part one which isn't until tomorrow you know i think i made it technically on the 11th that still says eight years <laughs> so that will change so you guys want to watch that you can go into my channel and you'll see the the dates change they'll go from eight to nine from uh part one and part two and um um i might as well give you guys a little bit of a, a background because again i i feel you know because i'm doing the uh the meetup in salt lake city in a few weeks they're, they're flying me out for that and i realized as we come we came up on this nine-year anniversary that there's probably going to be some people there that have no idea who i am because nine years is a long time a lot can happen in nine years and so i might as well explain just i won't bore karen with it she knows most of this by heart but uh, I, let, let me give you a little background on what the hell happened um so in 2014 i was in boulder colorado I'd been living there for uh, 20 years, playing video games and teaching proprietary software and stuff like that. And I was in between tech companies. The tech, the tech boom had busted when the um, the financial crisis hit right after Obama was first elected, and the tech companies were were in just chaos out there. So I had some free time on my hands, and, but I had some some money. I'd made some good investments. It's like, eh, what the hell? I, again, if you're not married, and have kids. I took some time off. I was like, yeah, I'm going to play some Warcraft. I'm going to delve into some conspiracies and see what I, you know, see if I can finish the internet again. And I, I pretty much did to where uh, in the summer of 2014, I remember it was a, it was a beautiful sunny day. The the drapes were pulled, not because I was watching porn or anything, but because uh, I, I didn't want the glare on my monitor. Cause I don't think we didn't even have HD monitors back then. And uh, I, um, I happened to click, I happened to see over on the right-hand side, there was some Flat Earth videos. And one of them was done by uh, Jay 
Henning Caligia, if you remember that channel from way back when. And another one was Matt Boylan, otherwise known as Math Powerland. Because, mm. you know, when you want to rename yourself, you go with something eye-catching, like naming your first name Math and your second name Powerland. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever actually, do you ever did you ever hear his thing his reasoning behind it i actually thought no it was... no what was it <clears throat> well they use math to deceive you and what are they hiding and they use math and they're um do it so they can have power in their hiding land or something like that for all the power in their hiding land <laughs> something like that wow all right he said well... it better than me i will have to say because it was his shtick sure but I was and, like, well, that's kind of clever. Uh, and the the video that hooked to me was that got me interested because it was like, again, I, I was I was really curious. But one, as, as you know, when I clicked on my very first flat Earth video, I had a, a visceral reaction to it. I, I was I got physically flushed, and that and I'm I'm despite what you guys may think, I am very introspective. I I constantly like monitor myself, and it's like, okay, what you know, what's happening. Um, and it's like, wait a minute, why am I getting embarrassed? Let me click on a flat earth video. This is silly. I'm in, I'm in a, my place alone with the drapes pulled, right? And the door is locked. It's not like I'm, I'm checking out, you know, gay interracial dwarf porn, right? Or anything like that, which, which, which wouldn't actually shock me, right? It'd be like, eh, it's not me, but it wouldn't embarrass me. And, and so once I clicked on it and I got visi visibly flushed, I was like, okay, what is happening here? And I remember Matt's video, which I talked about a little bit in the, um, the documentary Behind the Curve, where it was the only good video he ever did. It, for those who don't know, Matt Powerland did exactly one excellent video. And he was like, one to, I, I'm one to talk. Like I did the Flat Earth Clues. And then after that, I was just kind of making all sorts of stuff. But, but Matt, here was the difference. Matt if you guys didn't know, in most of his videos were was either drunk, getting drunk, or trying to sober up. In most of his videos, except for one. And credit to the girl who I don't know who he was. He was dating, you know, his, he's from um, uh, Montreal, Canada, in Quebec. And this girl, his girlfriend at the time, sat him down on a couch and just ran the camera. She never got on frame. Just set the camera in one place. There was no editing. Just ran it. And she goes, tell the freaking story, right? Tell it. I watched and, that video. And it was a great story it, where he was, he was, he was really low key. It was the only time I, like, I, I didn't see him yelling at the camera. I have to <laughs> say that was probably the most genuine I'd ever seen him. Yes. Like at that point in time. Absolutely. It was, it was a great, in fact, it was a, it was a great short story and I, I played it back enough times to where, and I told the story enough times, which is why they used my narration in the documentary. Cause I joked to the producers, I go, look, I can tell it better than Matt can at this point. And I could. And the, and the story went that he was working. Now this is the part where I think he, he took out a degree of separation. We've all done it to a certain degree, which is, you know, Mark Twain's line, never get the truth, let the truth get in the way of a good story. You, you like, for example, you hear, it's, you hear about something interesting involving a bus crash, right? And then, but you heard it from a friend of a friend. Eventually, if you tell the story enough, you were practically on the bus because it's a better story, right? You take out the degrees of separation. No one wants to hear that, oh, I heard from somebody that heard from somebody. So in Matt's case, he said that he worked for NASA directly. I don't think he worked for NASA directly. In fact, I haven't for, for a number of years. I think he worked for a guy who worked for NASA. I think he worked for a high level a a NASA engineer who had who made a lot of money and had a place out in the Hamptons. And again, Matt, this was back when Matt was in the in the he was in his 20s. And he again, if you look at his early stuff, you know, good looking guy. He, you know, he went out to Hollywood, tried to be an actor, got some bit parts. He could um sort of sing sort of dance uh but he could paint I, I i you know i watched him do all these things simultaneously in some videos and they of course he was invited to things and and if you know anything about nasa engineers and en engineers in general they were really really boring people so i think he was invited it's like yeah invite the cool kid 
to to our NASA party out in the out in the Hamptons because he was he was doing painting this part of this guy's house. He can talk people into when people see see him paint up up close, they commission him to do weird art projects. Now you're not going to get it done quickly, but it's going to be kind of cool, and he's going to be kind of entertaining to watch as he does this. So he's there at this party, and the the story goes is that um, uh, the power went out. You know, it's it's East Coast East Coast storm. Power goes out and they're down to wine and candles. And it's just a whole bunch of high ranking government officials <laughs> at a vacation house talking shop. Right. And Matt's just this 24, 25 year old clueless pretty boy. And uh, and and some conversation comes up and they're talking about Antarctica. And, uh, and one of the guys says, yeah, I heard a rumor that GPS doesn't work down there. And one of the other guys says, oh, hey, hey Fred, you should take one, send one of your teams out. Right. Because everyone knew it. Like these were high, high ranking guys to, to see if that works. Right. And then another guy chimed in. He goes, well, if he sends his team out that far, they're not coming back. <laughs> it's like, what? It's like, why? And and uh, and Matt, at that point, you know, he's like, he doesn't know anything from anything. I would have done the same thing if I was in my 20s. It's like, why wouldn't they come back? Right. Is it too cold? It's like, why? Why? It's like, no, because because it's flat and GPS doesn't work out there. Right. And at that point, again, Matt in his 20s, because Matt didn't get it. If you didn't figure that out in the story, Matt didn't understand what the hell, you know, like anything, like when you say flat earth to somebody, you know, it's like flat earth. You know, like when we were talking about this nine years ago, say flat earth to somebody, they're like, le like, um, uh, oh, who was the, um, the UFO guy that, that died, um, that died, that I talked to? Crap. Glasses, overweight, Jewish. Oh, Blazar? Nope. No, 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 no. The, uh, the, no, the, the UFO researcher, not, not the guy that worked at Area 51. Oh. Uh, I, I keep wanting to say Weinstein, but it's not freaking Weinstein. It's the, um, oh crap. I can't remember his name off Ted. I'll, I'll look it up. Anyway, the point is, is that Matt heard this. And so then the, the, we'll call him the smoking man, right? The, the X Files guy. <clears throat> he gets a piece of chalk. And he starts drawing and explaining how the world works on the granite floor. And he's drawing out the continents and he's talking about thermal patterns and energy transfer and how the whole system kind of works. And it, and it kind of reminded me of the um, the AE map when Rob Skiba started hooking up the jet streams to it, how everything mm -hmm. worked in this wonderful circle. <clears throat> and again, Matt, Matt had no idea what he was talking about. But what made it so cinematic for me was because I could see it when it pulled back and Matt and Matt had this line. He goes, when he was done drawing, he had essentially drawn the UN flag. And he still, Matt, Matt still didn't get it because why would you? Why, why would anybody except the people in the room? And Matt wanted to play along because it's like everybody else apparently in the room except for Matt knew what the hell was going on. Right. You know, most of them are like, what? And they're like nodding, going, yeah, yeah. He's he's dropping some truth there, right? Mm -hmm. And that was it. Fast forward, I think it took like at least a year or two later when finally the light bulb went on in Matt's head. Something something clicked in. And it's like, wait a minute. He wasn't talking talking metaphorically or symbolically. He was talking like it was actually physically, that's what it was. And at that point, Matt freaked out, starts trying to call all his old NASA friends. And all the lines were disconnected. You know, the 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 people that he was trying to reach couldn't couldn't find him, and uh, or they weren't returning his calls or whatever it was. And that's when Matt all of a sudden pushed forward again. One of those human beings love a mystery, and it was a great little short story of what could be out there. And honestly, I, I'd love to to shoot that, which is why they animated it and put it in. You know, they made it kind of cartoony and you know not serious in the documentary. Oh yeah. But, but you could have shot that in a very, very cool, sinister sort of way. But I don't think the audience still would have gotten it unless they knew the context. So anyway, that video was what got me into it. I mean, really pushed my curiosity to where when I, you know, I woke up nine years ago and, and made that intro, uh, I, I thought I had an answer, but I was very concerned that I had missed something that I screwed up something you know how it goes right you, you think you've done enough research and come on I'd done nine years oh, or, what yeah well for me when I woke up to flat earth I was like 
I was looking at all kinds of stuff and and there was there was a little bit of content out there but not very much because it was 2015 right so I watched that same video by Matt yeah. um Matt Powerline that you were talking about and like what the the few little tidbits of other stuff that was out there but um but I I watched a flat water flat earth video he was also one of the early ones you know and you didn't even know about that channel which trips me out no so it's like how did what you know he had a pretty good video going pretty early on like where he was showing all these proofs and he was like but don't believe me just keep asking questions which is what i was like you know what i am asking questions damn it this shit is not real like you know it, it that's how i got i was triggered i was like come on i've been like i've laid out under the stars at night and seen the clear sky and the little lights the satellites floating across the sky man that was the satellite space is real, right? I, right. You know, so I, I started, I was, um, but I was trying to go to like mainstream places. I was like really digging in there. I was like, I need to know, you know? Um, and then I started realizing, wow, this could all be fake. This really could all be BS. Like all of it is CGI. Yeah. And the, some of the satellite stuff, it's like, it's not, that doesn't necessarily that's not 400 miles away like that's just a high that's just way up there that's just high altitude yeah plane. yeah you know it's it's so then i started realizing i was like oh wow it really could be fake it really could be flat yeah but you know but i was kind of going through it by myself because i didn't really have anybody to talk to because there was no like i didn't have any i probably had like 60 friends on facebook and none of them were looking at what i was looking <laughs> at right and <laughs> So I was kind of like by myself at home and I was like, am I losing my mind? Am I losing my fucking mind? Like, am I letting these people on the internet like screw yeah. me? Like, you know? Yeah. So I went back and forth a little bit. I went, I went between for, for a couple of weeks there, I would go between, oh my God, it's flat. What do I do? You know, oh my God, who can I talk to? And then I, then I'd be like, nah, it can't be, it can't be. So can't then be. I would go back and I would go look at what I was looking at before, I was like, did I really, did I miss something? Maybe there was something I wasn't looking at, you know, like yeah. I just, I had to be sure. Yeah. And I did that. I kind of hemmed and hawed and went back and forth a little bit for a while. And finally at the end, I was like, God damn it. I think the earth is flat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how many, and how many times have we heard that from, I mean, countless people, those very words where you, what you just said there, which is, you know, I went, you know, you went back and forth and at the end, it's like, man it can't be what it is I was and like, really because that's a huge freaking lie that's a huge that is a major lie <laughs> right yeah you and think? It, in the school like when you realize it that's i think why a lot of people just kind of check out an abort mission like right yeah. away because when you start thinking about it you're like the schools the schooling the curriculum everything in the curriculum, everything on TV, you start yeah. noticing how the globes are everywhere. Yeah. And, um, and just how triggered people get if you even just talk about it. Yeah. And then you start the more you look into it, the more you're like, wow. <laughs> you know? The conditioning, again, not we're not saying that, of course, the, the teachers know anything about anything, because they don't. Uh, this was put into the system for a for a while and it was put in quietly and very there was a lot of clever clever techniques you know again the this the simple the simple process of putting a globe in the classroom and just leaving it there for the kids to play with for 12 years just that usually is, is all all it takes but what you were saying there where um i have been so hyper aware of television shows and movies because and nobody else notices it, right? But all of a sudden, you're watching. You know, your eyes. Anyone in our community, your eyes are immediately drawn to it. It's like, what's that globe doing there in frame, for you know, for for scene after scene after scene, and you know they vary in size and color and location. You know, sometimes it's above them, sometimes it's below them, sometimes it's off the side, but it's in freaking frame. And it's like, of course, it's subliminal. You you don't you don't get it. And people say, well, no, there's globes and things. Like, really, you have no idea how many shows have globes in them somewhere. In yeah. fact, if it's not, I challenge you. If it is not directly a space show, why, where it's tied to space in some way, you know, because if it's a show about the moon or some sci-fi space thing, you don't need to put a globe in there. But if it's just why again, why is there a globe on top of the detective's filing cabinet? in a Chicago police department, 
right? Why is there a globe in that doctor's office who specializes in children, you know, child illnesses or whatever? It, they're always there. And then there was this, I wish I could find it. It's out there though. I remember watching it, oh good Lord, five, four or five years ago where they were talking about, there was there was a guy who worked in a movie, at a movie set and he goes, something really odd happened, but he was one of ours. And he noticed this where somebody came in, again, you, for those who don't know, you can donate any amount of money you can to any television or movie project, right? And they'll say, what do you want for it? And sometimes people say, oh, I want an executive producer credit, right? For your $50,000 or $20,000. or so, But sometimes someone will come in and say, hey, I want to help set design this particular room, right? And it's not critical to the plot or anything. It's just this room. And, and the producers or the, the studio will be like, yeah, we'll freaking take your money. Why wouldn't we? Guy's paying us $30,000 to, to do this doctor's office, right? To help do it. Okay, fine. You work with a set designer, right? You work with a set designer. You have, you know, whatever it is. You bring up a truck, you know, quietly in the background with, I don't know, 20 different globes, various sizes and colors. And you, you add it into part of the set design. And they're like, yeah, we don't care. Who would ever object about a globe in the background? Almost no one. And it works, you know, and, and it, the reason why it works so well is fine. If the show's canceled after one season, eh, well, but, but if it goes for like five, six seasons, oh, that's money well spent. Cause remember, you can't change the room for the most part, you, you know, you don't want to change the room. The room has to remain the same, which means that globe's always going to be there. And that's pennies on the dollar. That's awesome. So sorry about that. Um, Yeah. Um, there was, and, and of course I gotta, I gotta bring this up really quick, uh, because people, uh, I, I, there was a stream I was watching a little earlier today and people were talking about, oh, you know, when did Eric get in versus me? Yeah. Eric made his first videos in, um, 2014. Absolutely. And I had never seen them because why would I be looking, you know? And so when I did, I remember vividly, I'd done like my third interview, some, some podcast, some, uh, I can't remember her name, the, the woman, you could look it up if you want though. I've got them out there. And right afterwards, one of Eric's people, quote unquote people, emailed to me and said, yeah, Eric wants you to make a couple of changes in how you do interviews. And it's like, what? <laughs> why? It's like, first, you can't use Crow 777 anymore when you're talking about the moon. And he literally, that was specific from him. It's like, why? He has the best footage out there. Why wouldn't I use it, right? And second, you can't, oh God, what was the other thing he was asking for? can't use something else uh oh never mention the orlando ferguson map again that's like i like the orlando ferguson map you know i'd only done my third it and 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 i and i wrote back i was i was as nice as i could i was going look i have no idea who you're representing don't know who this guy is in fact um matt did the same thing to me because matt do you still have that email i doubt it i really doubt it. I, I i wouldn't have saved it because it didn't make any sense at the time you know, it's like it was just felt like like one of my early trolls, but uh, that email. But but I got to mention also real quick because you guys will you know this is for nostalgia and sake, and you 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 probably already know this. So I'm looking um, uh, eight years ago. That'll change in a couple of days. It'll it'll change to nine years. Was Flat Earth Clues Part Two: The Bird Wall? Right. My very first phone call about Flat Earth, and I will give him points for instinct was right after Flat Earth Clues Part 2. And you know who called me? Called Just called my number on the phone. Who? Matt Boylan. Wow. Yeah. He calls yeah. me up, right? And I knew who he was, right? And, wow. and, and he disguised himself first as he was like doing some, some other guy as an educational podcast. He literally was trying to bait me and he was trying to figure it out if, if I was legit, man, because he's got that cool vibe thing and and then finally he caves in after like paranoid yeah he's absolutely paranoid yeah and he he can't <laughs> again saving grace he cannot do a a, a comprehensive uh, i'm sorry wrong word coherent interview to save his life he can't i was just, I, I was sad because but at the same time it worked out for me which was in the documentary it's like i wasn't kidding people were calling me to get a hold of matt but anyway matt called me after clue two and he goes, he goes, why? It's, this is like one of, once he told me who he was, he, go, he goes, why aren't you answering my texts? Right. That was, that was, <laughs> that was his open message. And, I, and you know why? And I go, cause I don't have a cell phone. And, and all of a sudden there's this just silence on the other end. Cause he was trying to process that. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> so what you guys don't know is back in the day, I don't know if it's changed, 
Uh, but if you tried to text a landline with your cell phone, you'd get nothing back. There's no, there's no kickback message. Uh, I mean, so yeah, you, I mean, you've got like a rotary phone sitting next to you. You try to text that you, your phone, yourself, your, your smartphones are not going to tell you anything. And so he was just sending it into a brick wall, these, these text messages. And so that's why he ended up calling me. And, uh, and the conversation was limited because he was just talking. I put him on speakerphone. And as you know, he goes incoherent very, very quickly. And, uh, yeah, we, we talked for a little bit and then he wanted to, um, create this alliance between he and Eric and I, and I've still got those emails. I'm not going to read it here. I'll, I'll share it with you later if you want, but yeah. he, but there was this line, <laughs> line where Karen gets the good stuff where, um, he said in there and he was really, he was posturing pretty heavily. He was saying that you have to go along with us or we are going to take steps basically to discredit me. We're, we're going to gang up on you. It was the ultimate in, in like early flat earth peer pressure. Like, really? Like, really? It's like, I hardly know either of you guys. I've Why never would they do that. That's very shilly shady behavior. Uh, it's, it's, come on, you've seen this before. It is, it is, it, it, yeah, it does sound shilly. You're absolutely right, Karen. And shady back then, like you're gonna go along with us back when nobody knew shit. It it was. Why would well, I go it, along with you guys? You guys don't know shit either. Yeah, I know. It's the early guy <laughs> power structure crap that that so many guys do. It's like they knew what was going on. In fact, I'll share it on Tuesday. Um, you know the the guy Wait, that keeps our math. Matt Powerland and Eric. Do they talk? Are they not friends? A, not anymore? Oh no, that alliance fell through. Faster I was than say, there's no way those two egomaniacs are friends. No, with each other. no, that might as well have been Germany and Italy. <laughs> no, those guys were doomed. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you kidding? Those two? No, my God. And neither of them want to share any sort of stage time. So um the fact that they were trying to 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 influence me was was I mean one flattering, I guess. But at the same time, I was like, look, guys, I don't know yet. So I, I Eric and I have still never talked. By the way, I heard a rumor that he's he's in Idaho, and I still think he might be in Idaho. You might be right when you tell me that he was in the States. That's yeah. just a rumor I heard. I don't know shit. I don't follow him. I don't know anything. I saw a tweet from a friend that, that he tweeted that, that showed some sort of sundog, sunrisey, sunset thing in, um, in Idaho. It says, you know, hello from Idaho. But if he is in the States, he's being awfully quiet. Yeah, you know, which which would I would expect from you know Savanye. That's you know he's not. Again, yeah, again, <laughs> again, Owen Benjamin. If you don't know it, Savanye is such a great. I mean, the fact that Owen came up with that on the fly is brilliant. You know, the the guru in the back of the party that you hear whispers about, and apparently that was happening to Owen a lot. They kept everyone kept mentioning, dude. Have you talked to Eric Dubay? Have you heard anything about Eric Dubay? And he heard this so many times. He's like, oh, for God's sakes, he's like. He's not, he's not a guy in a beard in the back of a cave doling out sage-like wisdom. But that's but anyway, for damn sure. You know he isn't. So anyway, Matt or, or Matt and Eric tried to uh, get me to you know be part of this alliance, and I said no. And then Matt and Eric crashed and burned on their own. Um, Eric, you know, did his own thing, and and Matt. Oh. And they've both been calling you shill ever since. Yeah. Yeah, and again, that the part in the movie was true. I, you know, the 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 producers did slant a lot of things in behind the curve, but the one thing they got absolutely right was that Eric, and you remember this, where when Eric went on Eddie Bravo's thing, and called the the first Flat Earth conference, you know, shill fest, right, and said that nobody should go, and it's like, all right, that's fine, who cares, right? But Eddie then Bravo. the what? Eddie Bravo wasn't involved back then in 2017. I don't yeah. think it was Eddie Bravo. Are you sure? We should look that up. I know it seems like, remember, that's 2017. Not, not 20, time flies. Not I don't 2015, see. 2017. I know, 2017. That's when I, I put my first video out in January of 2017, and there was no Eddie Bravo back then. Well, Eddie Bravo wasn't doing his own thing, but if I'm not mistaken... Eric was the first guy he reached out to. That was early. Eddie I know. Bravo. Well, probably because I know that 
Yes, I know that there was. No, some in fact, I know it was. I know it was yeah. because we. Met, okay, okay. No, I, I. I just don't remember Eddie Bravo doing anything in 2017. I mean, maybe I could be wrong. I, I do, but only because again, the time blurs. Karen and I were talking before the show. Flat Earth years are different than normal years. We're we're now in a whole different zone. Nine years in flat in flat Earth years is practically a lifetime. Um, but I I remember because you you remember this. I'll, I'll give you some hints. So. The Flat Earth Conference, the very first Flat Earth Conference was 2017 in Raleigh. Yes. And which was going to be, of course, more trivia for you guys. Let's reminisce, shall we? Um, yes, that's was, what the show was, was all about. It was a co it was a co-conference with Robbie Davidson and forced the line with Brian Mullen, right? Brian Brian Mullen, the structural engineer, licensed structural engineer. Unfortunately, the trolls took it too far. And I did not know this. And that is if you are certified in something like a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, where you have to take a test, right? And you actually get certified. You are then beholden to the institution. So you can have your license revoked if you do things that are unbecoming of your profession, right? You know, like, so a guy in, in um, uh, a lawyer can't be caught doing child trafficking, right? He'll get his li license pulled, obviously. And a doctor can't start selling snake oil. Uh, on a regular basis well some troll called up the ethics board of engineers for structural engineers and reported that was that that was that george hanachek guy or had, yeah had and, he bra and he bragged about it yes yeah and he bragged about it he bragged about it and and then and he used to go on um different flat earth channels and do presentations about why the earth wasn't flat and they were always full of shit and then he showed up at one of the conferences yeah did he show up i uh, probably in, um Denver or Dallas? I don't One of remember. Denver Possibly. or Dallas? It could have been Dallas. Dallas was was chaotic for as cool as it was. Dallas was, Dallas was pretty chaotic. Dallas, there was a lot of um, people, bad people that showed up. I think to Dallas. Yeah. Well, I mean, hell, we had trolls that were streaming from the lobby, which was. I mean, dedicated, dedicated. That was, that was the one that I went to, and I went and I found a troll in the hotel and i live streamed me and ted <laughs> finding his location and i made him squirm in the chair yeah, <laughs> <M> yeah. <sucker. laughs> fucked you up so so um oh crap so we're 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 we... oh yeah so anyway so Brian, so, yeah, so they, the, 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 ethics, board the ethics board on brian mullen so on right? brian mullen and and they called brian and brian got an attorney and his attorney said yeah so i've talked to the ethics board you got to pull out of that conference immediately. And because of that, Robbie Davidson got sole, sole ownership of the, the conference, you know, that, that yeah. particular venue, which he ran with. It's like, oh. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, and that, is, that could be a whole nother stream. And yeah, when you I'm Rick, Lord Rick of Cameron for that one. I'm Lord of the Flat Earth International Conference. Oh, we're going to work with this. Robbie right. Davidson from uh, Canada. You guys probably know him. Uh, uh, Celebrate Truth. His channel's been out there forever. Not many people have talked to Robbie since since he did the... Well, he did three conferences before it all went to hell. But anyway, so Robbie took over that one. And so Brian had to back out. So l let's circle back to the, the Eddie Bravo thing. The reason why I know that Eddie Bravo was involved just beforehand, it could have been late 7, 2017, but, but what happened was we invited Eric to come. Right. You know, Robbie Davidson reached out and, you know, I'm not going to try to imitate him, but you, you know, it's like, of course, Robbie was going to reach out to him. Of course. It's like, yeah, you know, you're going to come, you're going to come to the conference. Yeah. So he said no politely, but he said, oh no, you know, best to you guys. Hope you guys do a great conference. And then he go, he does, he agrees to go on Eddie Bravo's thing. Right. And he was the first guy. It was way before David Weiss and, and Eddie Bravo got together or anything like that. And he goes on there and I predicted it. I called it. Look, I am a part-time prophet, guys. And I called it because I you read enough people. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is what's going to happen. I go, if this thing runs long, right? I think he was scheduled for like an hour and a half. If this runs long, Eric's going to get comfortable. He's going to get in a good place and he's going to trash us. And at the 100 minute mark. That's exactly what he did. He got too comfortable. And then all of a sudden he goes, oh, yeah, it's a shill fest. And everyone there is a government agent and nobody should go. And and then Eddie pushed him on it. And he goes, well, is there anyone you can endorse in the Flyers community? 
right? You know, first he said, well, you know, is there anyone specifically you want to condemn? And and Eric just stood there like someone asked him the square root of something. And then he said, is there any, <laughs> is, is there anything, is there anyone you can endorse? And he, he wouldn't endorse anyone either. It's like, okay, so it's all him. If you guys don't know anything about Eric, Eric is, uh, what, he succeeds in spite of himself, right? He's his own worst enemy. And, and come on. Eric he, sucks. He does. He does. If I, you're, I, you know what? what? Fuck you, Eric <laughs> Dubé. Just want to say. It, <laughs> his channel gets burned down. I will. I mean, his people, I have can't, I have lost count so many years ago of the people I, that would like troll me either in comment sections or in emails. And I'd write back and, and I just a generic troll. And I go, let me guess. Cause you could tell they're, they're flat earthers. I go, you're an Eric Dubé guy, aren't you? They go, yeah. So what? It's like, okay. All right. I, I get it. So anyway, I, sorry, let, let's catch up. So what happened was Eric went one step further on top of talking to Eddie Bravo about it. And I absolutely know it was just, just before the conference. He caught, he gets, you know, one of his biggest advocates was ODD, probably still is ODD reality, right? You know, big advocate. And he told ODD, it's like, tell your people not to go to the conference. He actually specifically said, don't go. And, but the thing was, it, as you know, Robbie Davidson conference, well, no offense to anyone else, but he, Robbie was the first one. It's like, it's absolutely non-refundable, right? You buy your ticket. That's it. That you will burn that money. If you don't go. I don't blame him for doing that. That's going to be me. No refunds. No refunds. No, I, refunds. No, I I get it. But at the same <laughs> time, ODD was telling his people, it's like, I know you guys bought tickets and they cost hundreds of dollars. Don't go. And he and they didn't. And so there was this little scene that most people didn't even realize what was happening when Eric, when Robbie was talking to me. Because just because you know, there's like 100, 150 seats in the back of this thing, which are going to be empty, but they're all totally paid for. So from Robbie's standpoint, it's like, I don't care. It's like less things to worry about. But from our standpoint, I was like, holy smokes, really? Is that what happened? So eh, ODD probably shouldn't have done it, uh, you know, because I'm sure the, that some of those people came later. It's like, yeah, th I mean, the fact that you would even yeah. belie believe that everyone in our community were government agents. Yeah, like, but, you know, to, to ODD's credit, he did later come out. He's done a couple of my events. He did show up. Everybody had a great time. He put, you know, he put on a good show for people. No. I, I, hey, again, everyone's got. I don't agree with everything he says. I know ODD has put out videos about you calling you a shill, and, and again, again, stuff, I don't, but... I don't blame ODD. I blame Eric. Eric, started... I do too. That's why I said fuck Eric Dubé. Yeah, he started this <laughs> nine nine years it's ago. It's his fault. It's and, his fault. And that was the wedge of division from the very beginning. Yeah, that rumor has never gone away i can't oh. peel peel i can't peel that sticker off it kind of reminds me of let me uh, let me give you another comparison it kind of reminds me of if i think i have do i have it still lying around here i don't think i do it's in one of my bags um when i um when i joined the the flat earth society back in in late 2014 right because you know the one that was based out of um uh hong kong you know with thomas dolby is the the number the, you know zero zero one as the zero zero one member and and I and I made a clue about it. you know I, I talked about in the clue it's like yeah don't join the flat Earth Society because it's obviously it's at the very least it's it's a bait and switch because there's nothing happening there's only 500 people in it and there's trolls that are guarding the gate the velvet rope right mm -hmm. and then I said I said don't join them right and so what happens is year again this is what happens when time passes people find out years later that I joined the Flat Earth Society and they come back and yell at me and accuse me of being a shill because I joined and I go, no, 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 no. I'm the guy that made the video that told you not to join. <laughs> the fact that you're circling <laughs> this back on me, it's like yeah. people, it, the telephone game actually came completely back around and hit me in the ass. And it's like, oh my God. It's like, I shouldn't have told AO in the first place. It's like, look, you only knew, you only knew the Flyer Society was a bad thing because I told you. Well, how dare you go do and, and, you know, do actual, that's like actually going out in the world and figuring stuff out. You went and you joined this thing. You realized it was bullshit. And I told people. told everybody else. Yeah. And, and then now the you're the shill who's part of the, uh, yeah. the 
it's whatever society the flat whatever it's so yeah, dumb be, because they they forgot that they didn't realize the origin it's like well who who did the first video in the first place it doesn't really matter because the telephone game lost that part a bunch of versions it doesn't matter because so you know yeah. this other guy tried to make made himself out to be cooler than he really is and presented a cool persona on the internet where you were just honest and putting yourself out there and just yeah. asking questions yeah and here it, comes this dirt bag <laughs> i mean seriously yeah it, it's so frustrating because you know where this is not an organized bunch anybody who's you know nine years in and, and especially coming from i know i've done conferences if you've even tried to do a meetup you know that getting people who you know flat earthers together is yeah. like herding cats it is extremely difficult yeah. to get people together so to come into this and to uh, supposedly or you want to wake people up you want the truth to be known and to come into this and right off the bat start start firing shots at other people and shill calling us stuff like, I'm sorry, I don't have, I, I got no love for that guy. And I have no problem saying what I think. I'm not going to be a little kiss ass like all these other people, blah, blah, blah. I remember I ran into Eric Dubé in the chat of the like Flat Earth Conference in, in the UK back in the day. And he started showing up in chat and I started asking him questions like, hey, why do you talk shit when you don't have any proof? And, and then I've got my own friends telling me, Karen, why are you going after Eric? I'm like, because I want to know what the F is going on around here, man. What? That's why yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not going after anybody. But listen, you're going to explain yourself, dude. If you're going to sit behind your computer screen and be in a little anonymous pipsqueak terp and talk shit, you know, as soon as I find you, I'm going to make you explain yourself. Yeah, that's yeah. all there is yeah. to it. Yeah. Why would why would it be any different? Anybody else? Why would it be any different for anybody who's here with with good intentions, with true intentions of wanting to change the world, literally change the world and not be under the thumb of these tyrannical, psychopathic liars who yeah. want to make our lives miserable all the time? Yeah. Like, fuck off, Eric. <laughs> this rant. Sorry. Sponsored by Karen. I'm D. a little ranty today. That's okay. No, no. And and you're <laughs> you're you're absolutely right. I mean, I it doesn't bother me when anymore. I mean, it used to I used to get a little facial tick when people would come up and say, Hey, just so you know, and I hope you're not upset by this, but I I love your stuff, but I got into it first through Eric and then I got to you, which you know happened so much like even the conference that you just did back in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I, I again lost count of how many people it's like oh yeah i was an eric guy i mean erica just has no idea how much i helped him because when he put his stuff out there it wasn't for first year people it wasn't and people got into my stuff because it was lowest common denominator is very easy the clues are very easy to understand and then then they understood his work more hey, and the guy should be buying me a freaking fruit basket every christmas but Goddamn right, he should be. He should be. Man, you know, <laughs> seriously, though, <laughs> he uh. should. And and I get it. At this point, he. I will. I, I I'm not going to give him credit for this because this is just instinct. Which is, he learned that his audience wants a certain thing, and he's not ve he's not veering off from that. He set the tone. Then his his listeners were like, "Oh yeah, we're with you." And then all of a sudden he's like, oh my God, I can never, I can never change that. So I'm going to just keep, keep going and right. keep going forward. And uh, that's because, called you know, being a, a cult leader. There you go. Like when he was like auto banning anyone that would come into, you know, to Ifers. I don't think Ifers is even around anymore. I looked it up the other day. I didn't see it. I think, I think the, the, the web address is shut, finally shut down. I think, um, where you know he had the the enemies list and he would like i remember the story from years and years like jaron would go in and just start just start making generalization you know just general comments and eric would like ban them you know just just throw out bands like a like a king on a throne you know off of their heads off of their heads and to where now again make a public appearance for god's sakes if you're in the states why i mean you have already missed so many opportunities over the years just do something i know it's like you're gonna play the savanya card i'm this mystical yoga martial arts teacher and i'm so mysterious it's like all right whatever 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 yeah all right whatever. moving on moving on <laughs> moving on um so yeah the uh uh the first conference you know that's when i first met karen it was so cool 
uh every everybody it was so wild uh so much energy uh the first conference was awesome it was, oh, it was so awesome great. it didn't even matter that you know you know who was running it because no. it was just like the people are what are are what makes it because everybody is just so eager to get around other people who whose eyes are wide open who they don't have to sugarcoat things with who they can say what they think and they feel about things and and yeah. the person standing next to them will be like yes yeah. you know instead of you're a fucking psycho <laughs> you know like <laughs> and it was so new we didn't even have trolls i mean and it was so new that the media was feeding off each other uh, there was people I have no idea how much media was there in that freaking lobby. I mean, there are cameras everywhere. I was literally on that second evening, yeah. I was wearing three simultaneous hot mics from and I didn't even know who the hells they were. Right. I was just getting hooked up for stuff. And there were cameras on top of me, you know, covering covering stuff. And it wasn't just me. There was they were shooting every anyone and Bob everyone. Steve they I was doing he did a bunch of interviews there, too. Yep. Rob Skeet yeah. was doing a wonderful thing. I mean, the lineup was was solid. Um, uh, of course, you know, that was early. I'm going to talk about Circle Back. You know, early Dean Odell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, <laughs> when he had determined that, that Karen was working for Dark Forces. <laughs> well, no. Wasn't that, that was then? Not no he didn't mention that then was that the, was that after that or, or happened, did he got his that opinion in denver and you know why you don't remember that happened in denver mark well well because um <laughs> for some reason i don't know my travel plan screwed up and and i i i wasn't in denver for as long there. as i as long as i should have been we'll we'll talk about that in a minute um <laughs> but the um but no that that first conference is absolutely i mean uh uh uh, D Marble was on stage. Rick Hummer, of course, was emceeing. That's the first time I met Rick. The first time I met all sorts of people. First time meeting David Weiss. Oh, uh, yeah. That was my first time meeting. Well, I had met a few Flat Earthers. Actually, you know the very first Flat Earth meetup I went to? Brian Mullen organized it. Oh, wow. And I met Brian Mullins and his wife and a bunch of other local flatties. Um, Brian, was, Brian was great, by the way. And he He's added. He's a cool dude. I wish he could come back. Yeah, I mean, his videos are never going to go away. They're still out there. If you guys have never seen a Brian Mullen video, you know, part of his Falls 14, Out Physics. Falls Out Physics series. Oh, my God. Can you remember? Classic. Full-blown structural engineer coming out saying, you know what? Doesn't, the globe doesn't make sense. The curve doesn't make sense. Here's why. Let me tell you why. And he breaks it down. And again, it pissed off people. It pissed off the professionals. They were like, how dare you cross that line? Yeah. yeah how, how dare you do that? So, and... That was great, though, because I loved that stuff because for me, you know, I don't I know I don't look it or talk it, but I needed that proof. I needed that that technical proof. I needed to see something substantial that made sense in my mind, yeah. you know, because it just, you know, when you grow up believing something for your entire life, you're like, you need this. You need to show me some real shit, like get the graphs out. Show me the, no, you know, show me the money, right? Yep. So his videos were really a part of that. It was really, you know, because he talked about the whole, you know, earth physics and how earth physics work and how, you know, it really doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things for us to be on a spinny ball in the vacuum of space. Like, that's insane. But, you know, we all thought it was perfectly fine. Yeah. <laughs> but when you, when, you know, when, when you get these people like Brian you know, and others who start, you know, make these videos asking these questions like that's, that's, you know, um, world changing historical stuff, right? Like he should go down in history. You know, a lot of these people, Rob Skiba, Bob Nodell, these people cannot be forgotten, right? We can't let these people be forgotten or what they've done for, you know, absolutely know the truth absolutely and let me segue real quick into that was the first time i met rob in fact i didn't know i didn't get the chance really to spend much time with rob skiba at that first conference but that was the first time that he brought up and he created the the slide which was april 15th 2015 uh the mm -hmm. day that mark Sargent ruined my life and i wasn't even in the building when it happened and apparently it got some good laughs i, I was because i was out i mean i i didn't see most of the presenters because i was constantly talking to various media that was there were you know wanted to wanted to break down some stuff and 
that was so great. I mean, Rob, I had, I did not know. I only knew, uh, like in the the year or two after that, how much weight Rob had in the the biblical community. He was mm -hmm. huge. He was, and he was the old. He was the veteran in a group of speakers that had never done, you know, obviously not done a lot of um, uh, room presentations like this. Rob had been doing this for years because he had done biblical prophecy. He had already written multiple books, and and he, this is a circuit that he was well used to. And then, kind of like Marty Leeds, once he figured out the interest, you know, you go where the interest is. And he's like, it's like, wait a minute, Flat Earth is getting me way more, you know, focus than my other stuff. He's oh yeah, we're 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 going down this. I'm going to I'm going to really unroll this thing out. And he did, and it was awesome. You know, Rob did a wonderful job to where I, I think testingtheglobe.com is still up, and you know his his famous biblical site. Again, uh, for those of you who are into, um, yeah, Rob's site is definitely still up as an archive. You can yeah. still go see all the stuff, all of the Bible verses that talk about flat Earth and all that stuff. Yep, it's still there. Yep. and on his YouTube page, he still has it's. There's a playlist on there. Because it's not immediately available, but if you look there, it says Rob's Flat Earth Videos or something like that is the name of the playlist. And all his Flat Earth videos where he does all the investigations, everything that he did is there. And it's all great stuff. It all stands the test of time. He was very thorough. He was very, he was very good at what he did. And me watching him, that was a big part of me waking up. Thank you, darling. And, and you know, it was like... Thank you, darling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um and Rob was, waking you up yeah and it was like because i was waking up at the same time when i was watching his videos come out where he's like i'm not convinced yet and i was like yes this is what i need somebody who's examining this shit because i'm exam examining this right like it was very synchronous the way that he was releasing his videos and what he was doing for me so he yeah. was very influential to me yeah. so um and yeah he, he and then brought... of course bob and of course, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, Bob, uh, yes. Bob, Bob at the first conference was great. Globusters was great. Uh, everybody that... listening to it early on every Sunday, the, the, that technical stuff. Like I said, like I like the technical stuff. I like the geeky stuff because I, um, you know, I'm very interested in, in, you know, I have that whole creative side, that fantastical side too, but. I'm very much grounded also in like the logical side of things and the technical side of things. Like it has to work in reality. Right. You know? So listening to all these people that we just talked about, like that was key for me because yeah. they were talking about how this stuff worked in reality. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Globusters, I, I, I mean, my God, they're, they're still, you know, there's still so much content. I mean, there's, they created so much content. Um, and people have to understand that when Flat Earth first broke out, there were there were so many cool channels. I I couldn't even begin to list them all. That were all. It wasn't just a couple here and there that had a following. There was a bunch of people. I mean, again, the fact that we could organize a conference so fast, you know, with with speakers that were you know established channels that you know that you could draw people to. Uh, and it, that, again, that first conference was, was amazing. Uh, I, and, and, you know, some things great. worked out. I'm sorry, go ahead. It was a great time. It was, yeah, it was great. Amazing. Uh, it was, it was like, it was just what I needed at yeah. the time. Like it was, cause when you, when you wake up to all this stuff and you realize that the world isn't what you're told, it can feel kind of like depressing. Yeah. And a little bit lonely and a little bit isolating because there's not very many people. Well, at least back then. Yeah, back it's, then. It's not as bad now, but back then there was really nobody you could talk to. Right. To actually go somewhere and be in the physical presence of other human beings who thought like you, that's 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 oh, yeah. definitely life-changing. Yeah. Meetups and conferences, I cannot overstate this. And we've talked about it many times on Strange World every time that one comes up which is there's so much energy in the room because there's no judgment. You know, you're, you're there with your family, your tribe, and everyone is as amped up as you are. And in fact, most of them have been jonesing to get there because they've been busting at the seams because they, you know, the ones that weren't dumb enough to talk to their family immediately. It's like, oh, I'm in the flat earth. Isn't that great? You know, and then they were shipped off to a mental institution. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, again, I the fact that I have to do public safety announcements every freaking holiday. It's like, do not go to your Thanksgiving dinner table and bring this up just out of the blue, unless oh, everyone's God. good and drunk. And even then, you should read the room because it could go badly. Yeah, uh, that was it, so bad. I was, I was, I was like, oh my God, we've we've been lied to. Everybody should know. Everybody's gonna want to yeah. know. Yeah. They're, they don't want to. Nobody wants to be lied to, right? Everybody hates right. that, right? So everybody's going to know. So then I, so then I went and started trying to talk to people. To talk to my mom. My mom's like, "Are you crazy?" Yeah, yeah. People. <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Oh, I guess everybody doesn't want to know." <laughs> I, I, I got to get this before I give Karen my my um, my big public apology, um, which is the 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 most important thing you've got to learn as when you first get into flat Earth is do not forget your journey. Do not forget what it took for you to get to the point where you sit down. It's like, yeah, not a globe anymore. Here's why. Here's what I, here's what I, what I know. And this is, you know, your self-realization because the people, when, when that, when that finally clicks for you, you think, oh, it's so obvious. You just erase the weeks and months that it took you to get there. If it took you that long. And then all of a sudden you come up with this unbridled optimism, which again, I, I love, but we see it so many times, which is like, wait a minute. It's so simple to me now. I can convince somebody over dinner or coffee. <laughs> I, can, I can convince a complete stranger. All I have to do is say this, right? Because it makes perfect sense in your head. You don't realize that the person across from you is walled off right? The walls that you broke down that took all that time, they're fully walled up, right? You got to get through all those and you're going to get frustrated because you're going to hit it. It's like, isn't it easy? Can't you get it? Aren't you getting it? And then they're staring at you again, like you have a praying mantis sitting on your nose and it's, it, it's frustrating. And that's why I remind people like, look, it's not your job. Uh, fine. You want to give them the idea? Fine. Let them go. They're not going to change in front of you. They almost never change in front of you. It's not like being a vampire where you bite somebody and they turn into a vampire right away. It's not that. Well, even then they have to like get buried under the dirt for a There night. you go. Or or a werewolf where you have to wait till the next full moon. <laughs> it's never immediate. Right. It's never immediate. You're Unless absolutely, you're a zombie, you're, maybe. You're right. The zombie would be probably more immediate. Vampire <laughs> and, and werewolf, not as much. <laughs> but but it's but that's what it's like. And people, they oh my god, it's just I, I get it. You want to tell people you want to scream to the rooftops. Anyway, the meetups are absolutely fantastic. And, and I love them very much was I'm, I'm looking forward to the Utah meetup where, you know, apparently it's going to be really, yes. really cool. And then doing a breakfast, but I've got to do a public apology. I don't want to necessarily talk about too much. The, um, the 26, 16 conference, but I do want to make an official public apology, which I, I know I've said this kind of off and on, you know, to you over the years, which is Karen was out of all the people with, cause I walked out of the 2016 conference. And I did so. Sorry, sorry. There was no 2016 conference. 2016, by the way, was supposed to be Vegas. Patricia was going to put it on, but she got. Too oh, shout out to Patricia, by the way. Patricia Steer, who was who also in no small part helped this thing move along. Patricia was huge because she was interviewing people. Yeah. And that was another good thing. That was where I really discovered, like I saw Bob on that, on her show, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. Yep. And I was like, okay. He's a real dude. He seems reasonable. It was like she was interviewing people and she was humanizing flat earthers. She was not, she was saying, hey, look, they're not all crazy. They're not all out of their minds. They're just people like you and me. And and that was so huge. Yeah. Yeah. Her her interview show was was really well done. And it also helps. You did a great job interviewing. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. She was the, the most professional person on camera I've ever seen. I mean, the fact that yes. she sat down with CBS News, did a 40 minute interview at a picnic table and it was bulletproof. I watched the whole thing. It's like, my God. And then they deleted it. They They pulled it off their archives. You can't even find it on the CBS archives now because it was too good. It was yeah. too it was too professional. Um. Uh, but the, the 20, the, the next conference, the second conference, we'll just call it the second one. 2018 conference was in Denver. Um, that was a, uh, you know, again, that was partly Robbie's fault. In fact, it was a lot Robbie's fault. So if you guys didn't know the, the, one of the famous, it was all Robbie's fault. Um, the, the famous, although there would have been a lot of promoters that would have taken the money, 
the one of the biggest YouTube trolls that was out there. And again, credit to him for seeing the trend because that's what he did was he hunted down. It's like, what's hot right now? Flat Earth, great. What's coming up? Flat Earth Conference, great. Called the promoter, Robbie Davidson, gave him a bunch of money. <laughs> so I'm going to buy a bunch of VIP tickets. I'm going to buy a bunch of rooms. Uh, I'm, you know, thousands of dollars. Don't know how much Robbie pocketed. Don't really care. And but the 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 caveat was Robbie, you can't tell anyone I'm coming at all. And it's like and he didn't. He let us all believe it was going to be some actual celebrity. And then when right. we found out who he was, none of us knew who he was. I didn't know who he was. Yeah. And then I messaged my my son, my at the time who was young 15 16 years old and i'm like so and so is going to be here and he goes are you serious and i was like yeah is that good and he was like and his reply was no that guy is a piece of shit and i was yeah. like oh this is not gonna be good yeah no like, i mean my son is telling me this person is a whore i don't know who it is but my son thinks he's a piece of shit and that's bad yeah. <laughs> it was one of the most frustrating moments of my flat earth reality which was when because yeah robbie not only did he take the money but that what you said he hyped it up right and so what he did was he made this little comment i don't even know if he thought about it he goes oh well they're a singer and an actor right and it's like it's like wow that narrows it down well who could it be right because then we're you know you immediately jump to a list it's like okay who who sings and acts w will smith uh billy bob thornton jack black who the hell is it right and Robbie let the rumor mill fly. Mm -hmm. And with yep. that, he was selling more tickets because yep. people are like, there's going to be a big celebrity guest that shows up. And people are like, oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to be awesome. And people were buying tickets based on this celebrity guest that he would not say who it was. And then, and I, I can remember we were in that cocktail hour and, um, and in fact, David Weiss is speculating. David couldn't get enough of it. He was just eating the whole thing up. And he's like, he's going, I think it might be Jack Black. And I'm going, I go, he goes, what about that? And I go, eh, I'd be fine. I mean, Jack Black, I mean, I don't think Jack's a conspiracy guy. And then all of a sudden, the cocktail hour that this mystery celebrity guest was supposed to show up was a no show. He was there in the hotel. He wouldn't come out of the hotel room. Right. And I think his guys came down because all his friends were like, what, low 20s? And I think they go in this room, you know, our demographics older. And I think they realize it's like, okay, so all these guys could be our parents, <laughs> a lot of them. So what, you know, and so he backed out. And so Robbie just caved in and told somebody, you know, spread the word. It's going to be Logan Paul. And I remember vividly, you know, David Weiss came up to go, so it's Logan Paul. And I go, it can't be. I mean, I was in denial in, in some ways, but I go, it can't be. Logan Paul's a, a massive internet troll. He can't be the celebrity guest. You can't be the same guy. He goes, oh, all I know is it's Logan Paul. And I was going, oh, God. And then the what really hit me was, because I sat down with a number of the people, right? I sat on Patricia and Dee Marble, and I think Bob was there and a couple others. I said, look, you can't let this guy in here. I go, he's a freaking troll. And they were just staring at me because they, they you know, deer in the headlights. I was going, and I go, nobody knows who he is. Yeah, nobody knew who he was because his demographic is eighth grade boys. And he's always been eighth grade boys. <laughs> Seriously, it is junior high pranks. That's what his, which is finally why he got away from that and joined world wrestling, because that's a that's a step up. And nobody would do anything. And so I remember going down. The, I'm, and so I, I literally did not sleep that whole night, Karen. Literally just sat in my bed and stared at the freaking ceiling and was trying to figure out what to do. I was going, there's no way. And then I heard, of course, he was going to be on stage before me. It's like, oh, my God. If we, you know, what, what has happened here? And so I made up my mind and yes, it was selfish. And yes, I probably should have told people and uh, other people. So oh, you should have told it's like, no, cause you would have done an intervention and you would have stopped me from leaving. So what I, what I did was I remember walking down to registration and I asked, Cam I ran into Cammy. I go, Cammy has the special celebrity guest showed up yet. She goes, yeah, but I don't know who he is. And I go, what does he look like? Oh, young, tall, blonde kid. I go, I go, is his name Logan? Yeah, Logan, that's it. I go, that's it. I spun right around and I headed straight to my room where my bags were already packed. And uh, and I walked and I went to the airport. And I am so sorry, Karen, because I didn't have a chance to tell anyone while I went to the airport. And then by the time the rumor got out, you were one of the first people to hear as you were going on stage 
Yes, I was going on stage uh, for my presentation for 2018 in Denver, and I was standing next to Robbie and Rick Hummer because they were about to announce me. And I was looking at my phone, and in the Skype group chat, I see from Peanut from Mark, and I read the whole thing about how you were splitting and bye bye bye, you know the whole thing. And I just look up, and I'm looking at Robbie and and Rick Hummer, and I look up and I go, Mark's gone. And they go, Mark who? And I said, Mark Sargent. And they go, both of them at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, then, and then the, the, and I and, was like, and, meltdown. I was like, oh God, what's going on? Uh, I'm so, oh, I am so, I am so. And I, I have to go on stage and I'm mortified already. Oh, fuck my I life. I'm so, so sorry, Karen. <laughs> Uh, but but the the backlash was way worse than I thought because Logan took him three months before he finally edited that thing down and put it you know and put it out there on the internet. Yeah. And during that three months, oh my God, people came after me, came after me. And, and remember and, how you you started doing Strange World by yourself and you didn't even take calls; you were just reading emails. Yep, yep. And you were like, "I'm gonna do this until I see fit." like you were all pissed and yeah. everybody was like what's going on is it yeah. anything ever gonna go back to normal oh they it was gonna <laughs> it was gonna happen eventually i knew it because i had already heard the word you know i have I've, i looked through his back catalog is that kid he still has never done a serious piece in his life right ever remember this was the guy that should have been blacklisted because he was the one that went to the suicide forest in japan and was making fun of bodies that's what I thought well, the internet's never going to forgive him for that, but they have the attention span of an older goldfish. And so they did, or they just forgot. It's like, all right, whatever. So when he finally released it, even Robbie, he, Robbie doubled down, he tripled down. It's like, no, man, he's going to make a serious piece. It'll be totally fine. It's like, okay, sure. Sure. He will. And he didn't. And, and he tortured and Robbie was the, was his target. Robbie, Robbie was the one that, you know, it was, it was, that was his big punk. He punked Robbie. And that that was the thing. And that was unfortunately a bad look for, for Robbie. And that bad and I was for all of us. It was bad. But I will say at least, you know, he didn't get everybody. You know, that was one of the reasons I left. It's like he can't punk, he can't punk the whole thing. And you now I had to make some sort of statement. He knew that I left. And part of the reason he left the hotel was because somebody leaked him the stream where Zulu and I were talking the night I left and I was running mm -hmm. into no sleep. And I said that he should be cut up into little pe little little bitty pieces and buried alive. And he was like, "I'm out of here." And so they left the hotel that that night and changed hotels. But whatever. But that was the beginning, of course, of the uh, the Dallas con. You know, that segued into the Dallas conference, which yes. was it's still, in my point, well, one that I stayed. It was it was a lot more fun. Of course, we learned. Karen learned very quickly which was you do not start with flat earthers because flat earthers like a good time. They like to party. Do not schedule any speakers in the AM. Don't do it. Anyone listening, don't yeah. even bother. But also, and that's, you know, also 2019 is the first year that we did Flattoberfest. Right. Right. A right. month before the 20, the last FEIC, which was Dallas. Yeah. We did the first Flattoberfest, and it's been Flattoberfest ever since. Yep. Raise the roof, Karen. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Flattoberfest, which, of course, the first one was at the um, Firmament Club, if I'm not mistaken. The Firmament, yes. The Firmament in Greenville, yeah. South Carolina. A lot of black. Lot yeah. Of, uh... It was awesome, though. Yeah, we had 200 people, which at the time... Was this the second biggest conference? Because FEIC was, of course, the biggest conference. But yeah. to have, and, and it wasn't, you know, but still to have 200 people. And we had Rob Skiba as our keynote, keynote speaker. So at the firmament, it was one day we had Rob Skiba. We had Bob Nodell yep. and Mark Sargent yep. and um, Joshua Swift, who is authentic intent. And yep. did we have, and I think that was it for speakers. I think so. And I then we had so. some music. I, that, you know, I, of course, I, I yeah. injected the music in there. I had OBL and Twin Serpent. But 
you know, it was and only one day, but it was great. It was great. And it was loose. I mean, you didn't even have registration. It was just. I wasn't in charge. I actually was not in charge of tickets or anything because it was at that club, the firmament. And yeah, I think but, I, but I mean, were, there weren't even. There, were only I, don't 50 bucks. There, I don't think there were even lanyards. We didn't no. even have. I mean, it was really open. People just showed up. And, you know, it was it was more or less in the honor system. And everyone was, a, it was a really cool group. And I met all sorts of fantastic people. Yeah. Um, and, of course, it was the only time I'd ever seen Rob do his full set. You let Rob just go until he yeah. ran out of material. Yeah, Rob was able, and I and that's posted up on my channel. I did find the audio and some really poor video. See, see, okay, and then this will get into like what I've been doing lately. Yeah. So from 2019, we have that that you know Rob Skiba's full um, presentation, three and a half hours. It's it's his longest front, you know, beginning to end presentation on flat Earth, unedited. Yep. You know his full spiel. Um, but I have horrible video for it. So that's why I went and I invested in a, in a high-end video camera. So now every time I do an event, every talk will be recorded in professional, high-quality, documentary-style video. Because, you know, after Bob passed away yeah. and, you know, and stuff, I just, I was like, I had a thought one day. I just felt so compelled. I was like in tears. I was like, we can never not record these right we have to document this yeah. and we have to put it in a form that can be carried on you know beyond youtube because yeah. obviously youtube's not going to archive any or save anything for us they are definitely not on our side it is not youtube it is they tube right right so you know that's why you know and this is my this is what i do i invent everything that i do i i you know i put it all back into what i'm doing so you know moving forward there will never be another thing that i do where i have people presenting this knowledge this information their research you know all of that stuff that will not be documented and saved yep. and archived and and shared everywhere because yep. this is what that's what it's, what needs to happen that's what this is all about because the in the time you know this is supposed to be the age of information yeah. but it's become the age of you know, shadow banning and algorithms and, and, you know, and just all this ridiculous stuff. So it is, it is the, the, the onus, is, it's on us, yeah. right? It's up to us to, to document it and save it and share it and perpetuate it. Yep. And if you guys, anybody who's been watching my coffee talks, you know, I've, I, in the very beginning, I used to talk about, I haven't touched on it for a while, but if you look at old newspaper archives, like I found a ton of them where for for the last hundred years, we have been here, flat earthers have been around. We we have been here the whole time trying to, you know, counteract the globalist propaganda and tell people the truth and keep people's eyes open and, and not let the truth about where we live be, you know, completely hidden. We, this is, we, we are carrying the torch of things that have been going on literally for like a hundred years and we had no idea about it when we started right but but that's what we're doing so anyway yep yep sorry no i was listening by the way i, I realized there were people talking yeah. to me in chat am i in focus by the way i should be i came back into focus you are. by the way our phones are open you guys 848-222-2480 if you guys want to call talk to me and mark um you know nobody's on the phone line we got over 200 people in the in oh well we probably didn't tell people yeah probably didn't tell people you should well, call. i've got the number up here but but you guys there's the number call in talk to us yeah. you know bring some stuff up if you want to bring up bring yeah. up you know something that's happened over the last nine years something that you think that is relevant that we didn't bring up i mean so much stuff has happened i'm sure we've forgotten a whole bunch of Everything oh, prop. oh, I'm. Are you kidding? We can't even begin to. There's I mean, no there, way. Yeah, we can't. We're. I mean, there's too. There's too many hours. I mean, there's a reason why we have so much content out there. I mean, the tests alone. Oh, wow. Who's calling? No, no, no. You don't. No, don't call that number. Call the. Um, call eight four eight two 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 twenty four eight. If you want to talk to us. Don't call that other line. In fact, how do you even remember that one? <laughs> Don't call my 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 landline. Jason Ray says 2020 conference got the shirt. No Mark Sargent though. 
well that memory yeah there's that that's it that of course that's another little funny thing you see yeah. so yeah. much cool stuff has happened it's funny like we can we, we of course cammy and i were laughing about it immediately as soon as i found out you know that was well not 2020 that was 2019 where i forgot mark's um name on the shirt that was the very first one was the one at um the firmament no no it wasn't the firmament it was the first one at the um was it? or was no, it 2020? it was the it was the uh the the shriners first first shriners now you're out of focus oh crap really it was here i'll fix it the um oh you're right it was 20 it was it was yeah it was the, it was the shriners again probably the first one of the first time few times in history where the person that opened the show literally opened the conference was not <laughs> on the t-shirt yeah and again it was but it was perfect i mean david i have never seen david so excited to take advantage of that <laughs> Hey, listen, he was not the only one who was excited to take advantage. Mark Sargent writing Karen sucks on everybody's shirt. How could I? How could I not? You're just trashing me on every shirt. Oh, God, it was, it was too easy. <laughs> well, no, because I had I had to reflect the outrage that, uh, you know, people are like, yeah, I, I, I don't get I don't get really that upset about it. I was actually funnier than anything. It's like oh, it's like it oh my god. funny. That's why we were laughing. I was like, oh my god, I can't it, believe it. It was that. funny for something that wasn't wasn't deliberate. It was that was pretty damn funny. Out of yeah, that, that was good. But I mean, again, there's Listen, so... if something bad is going to happen at a conference, it's better that than like Logan Paul shows up, right? Right, right. Or let me bring up really <laughs> quick. I probably should look at the phone lines just to see if there's anyone there. Uh yeah, I see a couple of people. Um, before I pick up that really quick, um, let me mention I'll I'll pick up uh, six four six and then uh, eight four five. And then maybe two one six. We'll see. The because uh, they've just come on now, which is um, uh, you know, in Dallas, not to be outdone. I mean, because Karen had her Logan Paul during the the Flattoberfest in Vegas. She had Tyler Oliveri, and but she had two of them. She had Tyler Oliveri and the um, uh, the bad. Oh crap! The bad comedians. The bad. Oh crap! What was their name? Oh, who cares? They suck. Yeah, the 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 but they were mainstream. They were the, like MSNBC. Uh, tickets, uh, like the, they were like literally the last people to buy online tickets. Yeah, like when and, I would did my report, I'm like, oh, those guys, the good liars. The good That's liars. What That's who it was. The good, the good liars. liars. I'm like, what is the good liars? What the hell is this crap? Yeah. And of course. Yep. And they but, they, but they chickened cool. out because Tyler was the one that got thrown out. And I happened to mention to him, they have to ask me, they and they go, would anything happen to him? Because they missed it. And I go, well, he, they, he was lucky. He he did it during the middle of the day. Now, had Tyler pulled that off in the evening when people were like more, you know, had a lot more drinks, it could have gotten ugly or potentially ugly, depending on, you know, because, you know, our group tends to drink. And they they realize they're like, ah, oh, crap, we can't do it. Because if we, you know, because they wanted, oh. remember, remember what I said? They wanted to be on the panel at the end. Yeah. And then that it sucked because I got the people were telling me the wrong information. And then I confused some other guys that showed up from another podcast with right. them. And I thought they were bad. And then I shunned them for the Q&A and I shouldn't have done that. And I still feel so bad. So oh, no, bad. no, no. Had... It was it was totally cool. Because, again, it was all smoothed over 30 minutes later because they came up to me in the lobby. And they were talking oh, to me. Like... I feel bad. And I never got to say sorry. And I just oh. feel bad. So if those guys are watching, I'm sorry that. Oh, you, 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 were, to you were totally. Again, it was better. I feel safe, bad. Better safe than sorry. You didn't know. You didn't know what the hell. I mean, so, yeah, it turned out these I guys. Know, but were... if people are there for a good purpose, like, I don't want to do that to them. I want them to participate. I want them to be able to experience it you know so i felt bad that i kind of ruined that for them oh no 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 no, no. i mean i saw their faces they were more like you know like like what did we do did we do something which is why they <laughs> they were compelled to come up to me later it's like mark did we what did we do to karen i'm going who the hell are you guys <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> right and they're oh, like they're we're, so we're the guys bad. from whatever whatever it was kansas city or some somewhere back east they go david told had us come here and i go you're not who we think you are. I go, oh, I get it. I go, Karen thought you were the, you th thought you were the trolls. And uh, no, they were totally fine. Absolutely fine. Um, compared to like, you know, I'll give you one real quick. Um, the, the Jimmy Kimmel setup from Dallas, where Jimmy Kimmel, again, talked to, we'll never know the whole story, Robbie's never going to tell us. 
sent in a full-blown camera team, but then they had a guy pay full freight and come into Dallas dressed up as one of us. But what we didn't realize is he was not going to play it that serious, and who knows if it was nerves or is he just an asshole, but he was drunk by like 9.30 in the morning. I mean, really drunk. <laughs> and to the point where he what people sniffed him out. And I've said this many, many a time, which is the one of the great things about our community is it's almost impossible to fake it. You mean you know what I mean? We yes. we don't have anyone that's makes fake uh, fake person makes content. It's never happened. And people coming to the conference, if you could try to pretend to be flat earthers are so obvious. I yeah. spent two years on Discord. Yeah. Talking to people trying to be fake flat earthers, yeah, you can't do I it. can sniff them out a mile away. Yeah. Forget it. It's the you aren't getting past us. It's the conviction. Nope. It's not just the verbiage. It's the conviction. You you can feel it. You know, you see that yeah. in movies and television shows, right? Where you just we'll 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 use a cult reference, like if someone's trying to infiltrate the cult, and and it's like they're just not. You can't. You're not getting the vibe, right? You're not getting the vibe, which is why we'll segue really quick, and then I'll pick up. I'll pick up Alex. I swear I'll pick you up first. Um, which is, um, let's bring up, uh, you know, sad and yet interesting angle of ours, which was um, Mad Mike, which yeah. was Mad Mike, who was supposed to be in the documentary, but they bowed out at the last minute. They said, no, we can't. In case something happens to him, we don't want to set that sort of tone. And they were right because something did happen to him. But he was, I'll give you a quick, he was, he did, did interviews. Right. With some mainstream stuff. Of course he did. Right. You know, he put flat earth on the side of his rocket because we paid for the sticker that was on the side of his rocket. And I remember this Kansas City radio station that called me up and they said, yeah, we've had Mad Mike on twice. We're just not feeling it, if you know what I mean. Meaning he was I wasn't saying, feeling Mad Mike either. Yeah. He was saying the words, but it was like, yeah, it's coming off as like, you're not really that sincere. You're just saying the words. Right. And he was absolutely right. I mean, he did that thing with Daniel Tosh. Right. I wish I would have gone on Daniel Tosh. He did that full blown segment. And even Daniel Tosh call, called him out during the interview. He's like, I don't think you think that. <laughs> Right. And he didn't. He absolutely was in it for the fame. And he, he, he At least he was honest about it. He's like, no, I'm into this for fame and women. That's it. And it's probably the most fame he ever got. It is. Oh, yeah. We made him famous right up until the time he saw, you know, he signed that six year TV deal with the, the Science Channel. And then um, then that rocket, which they helped build. You know what I mean? And, that and was, then he they, became the flattest earther. Yeah. And then that, that rocket, which they helped build and paid yeah. for, all of a sudden the parachute fell off the rocket right off the gate. And he was he landed without a parachute. And you know how that goes. So, yeah. And then they quickly just, you know, that was it. No one ever talked about him again. And he didn't have any family. Nobody sued. And that, that was the end. So, Mad Mike, yeah. All right. Let's pick up a couple phone calls. As much as I love reminiscing with Karen, and I do, because we have a lot. I of love people. reminiscing with you. You know what, what, Mark? What? You're you're like one of my most favorite people in Flat Earth. You're oh, like you're the that best. Makes one you're of, one of my most favorite. Really? Mm -hmm. That's nice. Because by, you're, by the way, you're I, the one who's got my back. You're I the do. coolest. You're the most consistent. You never... You know, like I can always count on you to be you. I like I never have to be like, oh, is Mark gonna flip out about something? No, no. Like it just doesn't happen. People go at Mark all the time, and Mark never fires back. I don't. Do you guys see this? You guys don't get it. He's the one. He's like, you know, it's like he's. People come and go. You know, people are flighty, but there's a there's a few people who are really consistent who are like here or like, Mark's one of them. Thank you, by the way, for that, Karen. And and part of it is just because I put myself in a stable enough position uh, that I I have I have that luxury of doing it. You know, I, again, not get never got married, never had kids. I uh, was pretty much career oriented, uh, and then my disposition is what it is, which is and again with flat Earth, you know, I've talked about it, which is I can't get mad at people, at least in the flat Earth, you know, up either across from us or inside the flat Earth community. Because, well, across from us, because, again, we all started out as globalists, right? Everybody hates it. You know, the mm -hmm. fact that David was banning people on a regular basis just makes me smile every time. Yeah. He's like, ban, ban, ban. Then all of a sudden, Sophia comes to him and it's like, maybe Flat Earth. He couldn't ban her. <laughs> so he's like, damn right. it. Well, I got to listen. 
Um, but I, I, but yes, thank you. I mean, I, I try, I also try to set a good example, uh, which is, uh, yes, everyone has their own things they got to deal with and everyone has the chance to flip out. Uh, I've been very, very fortunate. I mean, come on, my channel was burned down three years ago. I would have been really upset about it. And, uh, and, and I, uh, come on, Karen, I, I did have that moment where I was doing shows by myself, you know, angry, yeah. you know, I was, that was the closest I could be to being really bitter but i wasn't gonna but i wasn't gonna go off yeah. mission. i was like but no, you no. know what though you know as mad as i was that you took off without telling me and like how much it kind of fucked up my day and like i was like in front of hundreds of people like mortified and it was really <laughs> like like paralyzingly bad oh no <laughs> but you were right at the end of the day <laughs> like you were right logan I was a shit bag and he shouldn't have been there i will he you know was what there to just troll us i will take that no? in that i i was lucky that before i left the night before i left i interviewed with that um that woman from pop that was interviewing for popular science magazine and when it finally came out i've got a copy back behind me somewhere and she said in the last paragraph and i and i didn't know you know she sent it to me beforehand and when I read it, the last paragraph was, well, it turns out that Mark was right about Logan Paul. And I was like, and I remember I was in like the waiting room of some hospital, you know, for a family member. I'm going, yes. I go, and I am. I well, am. and look at all this stuff that you say yes to that people get all pissed off about. Oh, yeah. Like, like yeah. the sports bet commercial where you're stabbing the globe <laughs> and like other stuff, which I think it's funny, right? Whatever. I but but you know and and for mark to protest like that like it has to be bad and he wasn't you weren't wrong oh i wasn't kidding you know, as pissed off as i was about it oh, I you wasn't, weren't wrong. yeah if you look i was i i play my bets fairly safe and in this case i had information that other people didn't i'd done the research i knew who this i was one of the few people that knew who this kid was and his screwed up brother the both of them, I was going, I, in fact, one of my thoughts was, oh, God, please don't let his brother show up, too. Uh, <laughs> no. But one, one more thing, and then I swear we we're going to pick up the phone call. I got to get this out, which is I do not regret the sports bet thing at all. And anyone that comes at me and says, oh, you know, is a hypocrite. Because when a mobile company call or when a gambling company calls you from Australia, Right, and says, hey, would you like to do a Flat Earth commercial? Here's the script. You can approve it ahead of time. I looked it over. It took me about an hour. And then it's like, you know, it was it was extremely, you know, I, you know, I, I'll tell you. I've never, no, you never asked. No one's ever asked. I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you really fast. Yes. How it went down. For nine hours, I was paid $30,000. Wow. Yeah. Nice. You know what? So, I've heard that a lot of people like celebrities and stuff that they'll do commercials in other countries because it's like their bread and butter. Like they can get paid. Yeah. It doing was just a it, little bit of work. And and I was a little embarrassed, you know, when I when I uh when I looked at the contract and you know, part one of your instincts is maybe I should ask for more. It's like hell no. I'm taking it. I'm freaking oh, no, 30k I've been like sweet. Yeah. I mean, literally for a I, weekend's I, worth of work. Yeah. Yeah. Nine hours. That's all I had to work. And they kept me in a, in an apartment for the rest of the week on their dime, you know, including the flights by everything was paid. It was 30 grand and expenses. Right. And when I did it, uh, they, again, they kept me in an apartment a week, just kicking around in case we had to do reshoots, which we didn't. So at the end of the week, they, you know, they called up and said, yeah, well, you don't need you. Go home. Here's a ticket. Gone. And it was like, and so and the reason why I mentioned that is because look, that was minor compared to what the McDonald's thing was gonna be. The McDonald's thing, which which didn't happen, you knew about this, right? Where the um the the London, the 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 group from London, McDonald's in London contacted uh, me through this guy. And they said, Can you come out? We want to shoot a thing for Pancake Day. And I didn't even blink at that one. I didn't even didn't even look at the con the contract hadn't even come and i said oh yeah i'm doing it now in hindsight because i and of course the whole thing crashed and burned because it was supposed to happen in february of 2020 that's when the borders closed and it was like and you know again that's murphy's law right i'm like the passport in fact not only will i go in they could say i could bring a friend it's like sweet it's gonna be a uh, you know a joint deal it was gonna be an all-week thing 
And when the borders closed, only later did I think, woof, I would have caught a lot of hell for that one. You know that. I mean, because then, you know, then you're talking about sports bet. Fine. You know, that's an Australian thing. But McDonald's, that's your evil, one of your evil overlords. It's a step down for like Disney. Yeah. Which I don't, which I don't think I would Sports bet. It's like, you know, I don't think people realize like how much money sports and betting. Oh, gambling? Gambling. Oh, sports like, sports hey, gambling rake, is huge. Rake it in. Raking it in. Okay. So like spending 30K on Mark Sargent is probably nothing. Oh, it's cheap. It's, it's absolutely nothing. freaking cheap. And okay, one one more thing about that. The only reason I got it is because one of our members was a VP in that company. And they didn't tell anybody. I only knew this because when I went down there, nice. you know, where I'm walking around, you know, because it was part of the foolproof campaign, right? Foolproof, get it? You know that whole thing. So, and there were all these other commercials that were being shot with, and three of them were Americans. And one of them was a set of idiot beauty queens right beauty queens that had no brains therefore they um you know they were they could be fools and what and i i saw one of them walk in front of me i go oh wow miss south carolina i go how'd you get her and it's like no mate she's australian i'm going what i go wait a minute i and i looked through the casting sheet right because there was a casting sheet first off i was the only one in the casting sheet without an agent still don't have one you probably were the cheapest one there. I think I was. I, you were and, probably the cheapest one there. Yeah. And the second one was I was the only one that wasn't an actor. Yeah. And and I go. Do they, see, now I have questions right there. Stop right there. Just what? because like in America, yeah. they'd be like, well, this person's not part of the art of the union or they're not part of the guild. And, you you know, like, wouldn't that be a big deal here? Or no? Is it oh yeah, yeah, it would be. Good? Yeah, yeah, the Screen Actors Guild, absolutely. Yeah, it would be. It would be tough to do, but in Australia, it's not a big deal because you're not part of the part of the same union. And I asked them. I go. I go. Wait a minute. Why am I here exactly? I go. I go. You could have. You could have hired anyone locally to pretend to be an American flat earther. Why'd you bring me in? It's like was wasn't our decision. It was um. It was that guy over there. And and so he goes. He'd like to meet you, by the way. And then so I go over there and like I shake hands with this guy and you can tell, you know, he's giving me like the nods and the, and the stuff like that. And it's like, oh, right. He's one of us. But he wouldn't. It's like, you know, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'm going to have dinner with this guy. Nope. He was silent behind the scenes. He was watching the monitors from a from a from a, a trailer. He was, what you know, watching to see how it was going to be filmed and everything. And that was it. You know, he just shook my hand, wanted to make sure that he, that I knew that he, I, he was the reason I got there. And I was like, great, flat earther, little assistance. It was, it was a nice little nod. I was like, yeah, no, I do not regret it for a second. Um, the, the pancake day would have been cool and I would have caught even more hell for it. But at the same time, I probably would have done it. What, why, you know, again, I, you've heard me say if this. You did, did, if you did a McDonald's commercial, that would have broke the fucking internet. It, it would have oh. broke the internet. It would have been. I, I actually kind of wish you did do it. Fuck well, it. Well, our, our community. I mean, <laughs> you, you think our community is split on me now. Oh, my God. They would have. Oh, they would have just. It's like, but but Mark did the McDonald's commercial. And hey, I mean, but I, McDonald's and all kinds of people eat McDonald's uh, and Flat Earth got in the brains of all these people. Like, yeah, you know, like it, it that could have been very infectious. It could have been. It could have been, but it what wasn't meant to be. And uh, I, I hate McDonald's. I fucking hate McDonald's. I will never eat McDonald's. I haven't eaten McDonald's in decades. It's shit food. And I can't. That, that could have been infectious. And I could have used the commercial. <laughs> I could have used the footage because it was um it was going to be shot in London, so it would have been the UK side of it. Oh, it would have been fun. But anyway, again, the opportunities were there. Okay, last thing, and they we're, we're going to pick up somebody, which is. And you've heard me say this at the conference many, many times. I'm going to repeat it again here. The reason why I get the opportunities that other people don't is because I put my name and my contact information out there. People are lazy. Agents are lazy. Bullshit. First of all, I'm going to call bullshit on that right there. It's not. You do put your name and content information out there, but there's something else. It's like you you know put yourself out there at a certain time and and your stuff went viral and people picked it up and it was very palatable to people 
Because I put my name and in, in contact information out there and nobody contacts me. Well, all nobody right. All right. It, it, it helps that my content. You're right. You're, it helps my content. You're very, was out there. Friend, you, you know, you're, you're well-spoken. You're, you're kind of vanilla, not in a bad way. Oh, I'm an average white guy, baby. Yeah. But like, you know, it's easy for people to, to, I, it's just very palatable. That's a very good word. I think that's the right word. You know, it's easy. You're easy. Yeah, you know, it's a it's an easy fit. Nobody has. You're right. Most objections. I, yeah, I've talked to a number of producers over the years. And as you know, if you do a, like a like a number of decent interviews, like people will look at you. And it's like your producers, they'll just look at the interview and like, yeah, he'll be fine. <laughs> they'll just grab you. Yeah. It's like, OK, sure. Why not? It's, um, I, I, I guess so. But thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, with which that, which is why I think we make a great team because I'm like like the polar opposite. I'm like the, I'm the antipode. Oh, Mark. as as much as I think it would have been <laughs> fun us dating, seriously, um, I I I am so happy that because because I look at Ted and I'm going, oh yeah, Ted's so much a better fit. <laughs> I would have for a bet. Ted is super. He's got he's crunchy. He's good looking. You know, he's got that. You know, he he, you and he share share the same interests. I think you have more tattoos than he does. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? He is. You think he has like the same amount of? Uh, I might have more tattoos than yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. You saying that we're barely? Well, I don't know because he has a back piece. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, by I'm, the way, I'm pretending. I, he... I of course I know what his back piece looks like, but that's a whole other story <laughs> for, for another show. Shut your filthy mouth, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dragon <laughs> looking back over his shoulder. No, it's not. I don't. I don't know. I have no idea what it is. Um, but uh, no, I no. I was really when Ted. You know, because I met Ted before you met Ted. I know you did. You did. Yeah, we we. I met Ted at one of the early Seattle meetups up here in the up here in the Northwest. And when I heard he was, you two were like becoming a thing, and he was going down there. I'm going. Oh, I am so happy for Karen because you 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 deserve it more than than most people you you really deserve that that uh that sort of relationship so i'm really really happy for you guys and um and again you're absolutely right you know how many how many tats i got zero that's okay though yeah, I've dated, but would it i've be... dated other people that i had boyfriends that had zero tattoos and i was like not much less than what i have now <laughs> i mean well, you're running out of space now. I'm. Let's just say I'm used to being the person who has the most tattoos. It's very rare for me to find be in the room with somebody who's got more tattoos than me. Nice. Doesn't happen much anymore. Good stuff. Now, now it's like everybody's against tattoos. Like I got tattoos when they were all like taboo, and yeah. and when I first got a bunch of tattoos, I would get people like not wanting to sit next to me in restaurants and and like giving me dirty looks. And then it became all trendy. Oh, yeah. And now it's like going back around where everybody's like, oh, I hate all the tattoos. Who likes tattooed people? Really? <laughs> you mean yeah. we're, we're, we're back to that again? Yes, it's going back to where people are like all anti-tattoo. And of course, because of what of of the subject matter that we're into now, it's like the tattoos, you know, have all the, the nanobots and I'm mind controlled by the AI and my tattoos. Like right. that's the whole thing now, too. Well, you're, oh yeah, you're absolutely AI. Uh, no. Yes. I'm, and I'm, again, yeah, I just, you guys know, it's not that, yeah, there's things, you ever played the never game? No, I've never had a cup of coffee just because I don't like the taste. Um, I've never sent a text. That's for personal reasons because I'm Gen X bitches. And um, I've uh, never, I've never had a tattoo because I I'm can't. Gen X and I text. Yeah. It's, well, I'm not saying, well, no, there's a lot of Gen Xers that text, but I don't because I came from the, the tech world where I saw the disconnect where before emojis came out and people were texting, there was a lot getting lost in translation. I was like, oh my God, they had to invent emojis to fill in the gaps. I was like, well, that's a lot of work for, you know, not picking up the phone. And again, I lived on the phone. I, I grew up, you know, doing a lot of phone work, all my tech support work when I was going through in the nineties, all the way through the early two thousands was all phone work. It was not, it was not the new thing where you get, you know, chat assistant, you know, where the first like three or four things are pre-programmed and it's like, you know, do you need help? No, no, it was all, all phone work. All right. 
Are we gonna take some calls? Yeah, Mark? let's 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 pick up some calls. Do you want me to do it? Um, do you want me to? Yes, you're in charge of the phone. Just All so right. everybody knows that Mark's always in charge of the phones. If Mark and I are on a stream together, Mark is always in charge of the phones. So okay, don't that's ninety percent true. Karen has override veto capability. She could walk in. I know your finger is next to it. <laughs> If you feel somebody's twitchy on the other side. Very rarely. Like I hardly ever do. Think really of all the phone calls you've ever taken. Very true. Probably, you could probably count on your hand, one hand, how many times I've actually taken over and like squashed these people. That's true. That is, you're absolutely right. And that's because we don't get, for whatever reason, between the two of us, when we're doing a thing, we almost never get trolls. The troll, trolls, I don't know. If it's, if I think it's a combination of fear on Karen's side and uh being amicable on my side <laughs> where it's like i really want to say hey, you're in charge i need to go um take a break and i'll be right back <laughs> well, be am right i back picking up am, am i picking up and just talking to somebody while while you're going you do whatever you want if you all right all right go go, go, the go phone people go, will hear it it'll be fine go. get out of here okay we're going to talk badly about karen while karen's gone all right six four six this would be alex in new york what's happening alex karen Karen's such a bitch now that she's gone. Just, just I know. Right? Do thing I can barely know. I mean, she asked me to do this. I'm like, oh, man, I don't really want to, but I think she's just really, you know what? She's just, she's really a mean, she's a really mean witch. She's really smart, but she's mean. Oh yeah. As far as witches go and come on, yeah, let, let, come, let's face it guys. It, witches are absolutely real. And Karen could run her own coven, except she like, she killed most of the last one. You know, that whole mirror, mirror on the wall. She also mirror, has mirror, semi-automatic got... weapons in her house. <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about. Yeah, witches. Oh, my God. That's a great band name. Witches with guns. <laughs> yeah. I, like I think they saw a video of her firing an AR-15. I'm like, I mean, that's the kind of flat earth, like, support we actually need is, like, witches with AR-15s that are flat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When really Karen was, blow, like, was uh, blowing up the uh, Tannerite. When she like put some some Tannerite <laughs> explosives in the globe and she blew it up with her rifle, it was awesome. <sighs> hey, Karen. Oh, uh, I was just Hi. thinking about your clues. So it's oh, hey. so Alex. Back? Alex Karen? is on with us. I You're think so lovely. I think we missed you. So I know. Good. All I know is I heard Ted busting a gut downstairs. So you guys were must have been talking <laughs> shit. Somebody was talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh crap! Ted was listening. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I was just, I was just, I was reminiscing about the clues a couple of days ago because I had watched them in eight years or nine years, whenever it was I watched them for the first time. I was like, oh man, the clues. Yeah. Shit, you know, because that was so long ago. It is. I remember, like the first time I watched him, I was like, "Who the fuck is this guy? And why does he sound so good on the radio? Is this like, is he jerking me off? Is this what he's doing? It's because he's got this really nice baritone voice. It's like works really well for radio. And he's like, he's making a lot of sense, you know. And immediately I start squirming because I'm like, you know, I was triggered. You know, it's just, <laughs> I'm just, you know, like, uh, and then like because Mark, you just sound so velvety. Uh, you know, I'm just like, okay, all right. If he's going to fool me with his velvety voice, like, you know, some ASMR shit or like fucking, you know, Bob Ross, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Let's just go through this, right? Whatever. And, you know, you know, I remember and like, I would impart it like this. Everybody's listening to this thing. We're already on board here anyway. But if there's, if there's one person that's not on board that's listening to this thing, like that was the channel. That was the one that gets the person out of their head and at least doing something proactive to find out if this is some bullshit because that's how it went for me yeah. you know like we could talk about savanya or, or, or you know eric dubay or whatever yeah. like he's so snobby I, I don't mind the work he did i'm not mad at him for anything you know he's kind of a dick to my friends but like you know his stuff is a lot harder to listen to the clues dude i mean at smooth as butter you know i mean I don't know. That that was my impression, you know, of well, thank just you. back on it. Like I went back and listened to the first chapter just just to do that. But I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Hey Alex, yeah. you're making me you're you're reminding <laughs> me of like my memory of Eric Dubay videos. Okay, so the very first Eric Dubay video that I watched was the two hundred proofs that Earth is flat. Half an hour in, I passed out. Yeah. Never finished the video. Then yeah. the second video I saw was like, well, I was listening to that video the other day. So let me go find this guy's channel and watch his video. The, the, then I go to his channel 
and the and the most recent video is this dude dressed up like a chick he's got like a he's got like a yeah. curtain wrapped around him and he's got like this weird headband and he's like in some like weird kitchen and he's like hi i'm patricia Steele. <laughs> and i was just like what is he wrong with it. this fucking guy what is he doing dude like i i <laughs> I was watching this video two days ago and he was talking like eloquently and it seemed normal. And then I go to his channel and he's dressed like a chick and he's like, uh, uh, I'm and I was just like, what? I didn't even know. Yeah, who, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know who Patricia was at that point. And, okay. And I was like, well, I don't know who this guy, I, I, I don't want to watch this guy anymore. And I don't know who this Patricia chick is, but I'll, I'm not watching that. And like for a while, then I would see Patricia right. Steer stuff come up and like I didn't want to watch it because I was like, there's some weird thing going on between these people and I don't want nothing to do with any of it. That's That was my impression. This is why I am very suspicious of Eric Dubay because like everything he does is like not, it's just wrong. Like it gives me a bad taste in my mouth. So yeah. I was like, this dude... He doesn't. Like, he doesn't help this cause. No, he, help his cause in any he was like stage. dressing like a woman and talking fine, like fine, a freak. Then like... So, so then, but yeah. then later, when I found, when I did find Patricia, and I started watching her interviews, I was like, well, Patricia. I was like, well, I actually like this woman, and I think her interviews are pretty cool. So, what the fuck is wrong with that other dude? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. You know, like it, yeah. It, 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 and I, it, I. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking like I, like the the fun part about the clues and the fun I, I would just say the fun part about our little gang here at Strange World or whatever is like like we have fun with it and we can essentially normalize talking about this subject and make it funny yeah and like not make it like this big battle of like I'm gonna be more flat earth famous than you are and listen to how important I sound and all this bullshit and I'm like I don't really have a lot of time for that like I need I need to have a good laugh and I need to have somebody show me some data. And then I can play with it and I can see if it works or not. And then in the meantime, have a good time. And like, you know, I think a lot of people that are out there, like in the world, that when they hear about flat earthers, they think there's some sort of cult going on here. It's not, that's not what it is. It's a bunch of people that understand how to basically deal with data. And we have long memory and we've sorted through all this bullshit. We went, at least to us, we've been through seven, eight years of this shit. And this little thing over here with us is really fun. And you can come here and have fun, have a good laugh. And you can go to Eric DeBay and you can go through all his proofs. And yes, they were helpful to me, just as a whole bunch of other people's proofs were helpful to me too. And I took all of that and I gleaned all the stuff I could out of it. But then, you know, you know, if you're going to be a dick, just like stay out of my fucking hole. Stay off my wave. You yeah. know, yeah. that's my gig. That's right. Get off my you wave. We, yeah. I like that. We've um, seen it. <laughs> we've seen it a bunch of times. Uh, for those of you who don't know out there, uh, creative people, and I don't care at what level you're talking about, whether it be um, content creators or actors or musicians, they see other creative people as bitter competition. Many, many times. There's a reason why Saturday Night Live bashes other. What do they do most of the time? They bash other other actors in whatever capacity or creative people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know this, Alex, I mean, coming from the music world. I mean, come on, everyone's a garage band until somebody signs a freaking major label and then yeah. they're immediately a sellout. And, yeah. and, and the other bands just trash yeah. them. And even though, all your old friends hate you. They yeah. sold out, man. Yeah, it used to be about the music. <laughs> like, oh, hey, you guys, God. I want to say, just want to say real quick, shout out to Richard B, who's gifting memberships again on my channel. Channel, Thank you, Richard B, from Australia. It was a pleasure meeting you in Las Vegas, and I hope to see you again at a future event, sir. You are very kind. And also, free, free Palestine, $20. Happy Flatter Day. We love you. Thank you for saving me from the demonic spinning ball conspiracy. Thank you. And shout out to Palestine. And and to I am a supporter of go. Palestine. And to Alex, I want to I want to respond really quick to your thing there about the whole you know velvety voice thing. That that is straight up mm -hmm. because when I did tech support, it wasn't the whole you know I thank you for calling you know blah blah blah. It's a great day at at, at Johnny's Electronics. It's it was doing high. I was talking and I'm not making fun. Um, I was talking down HR women from the ledge most of most of my days so when the payroll software crashed and they were panicking on the other end of the phone i had to be on the other end i mean literally doing this like it'll be fine 
I'm going to be with you every step of the way. <laughs> and I mean, it was, and I had to be, I no, had to drill that right, into them to where at the other, it's like, yes, it'll be okay. The sun will come up tomorrow. Don't worry. I'll be <laughs> with you. I'm right here. Yeah. You can lean on me. And you do that for and it works, Mark. It every works. Every step you take. <laughs> exactly. Every breath you take. <laughs> you don't need to go home to your husband. You can stay Everyone. right here. They're hiding. They're hiding. You. They're hiding you. The order. I need to work overtime. Yeah, and I mean, how could I break away? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Alex. How could I break away from that? When so when you know, again, I was I recorded the clues on a crappy USB headphone mic, and I it was like first thing in the morning. There was like, all right, the Earth is flat. Here's why. Well, let me break it down for you. You know, and yeah. Who knew? Well, I want to congratulate you on the clues. I love Thank the clues. You. Love you guys. I'm going to let them talk here. Right. Um, that's enough for me tonight. Um, Mark, go walk into an ocean. Bye. <laughs> Die in fire, Lowry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you, man. Oh, he already hung up. Bastard. All right. Uh, let's go to, well, of course we got to go to, you know, I'm not going to sing the song this time. I'll just introduce him normally which is uh this would be zulu one from the channel zulu one from new york hey man what's going on oh is this johnny's electronics tech support <laughs> <laughs> it, it is do you have a problem with your vcr you, have, you, have you turned it off and turned it back on oh, again God, i'm on the ledge i don't know i my machine is unplugged <laughs> what do i do <laughs> the red light's not on <laughs> Is the is yeah, the CD right, tray right, right. meant to I hold plugged the into a surge protector plugged into another surge protector? There you go. Yeah. Oh man, I love love you, Mark. Love you, Karen. Happy birthday, clues. I can't believe it's been so long. Holy yeah. crap. Long Holy crap. Time. I like know. Before we even started like, the stream, I was like, man, it feels like a lifetime. It's only nine years, but it feels like a lifetime. Only nine years. Yeah. 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 Right. Only nine. Literally, coming up on a decade a decade yeah yeah absolutely amazing i mean uh, yeah first off thank you for the clues Sorry i that. first heard them in august 2015 and i wouldn't say you ruined my life i feel you freed me like immediately i mean it it was about a week and a half two weeks before i was like yep i will definitely swear to on my life that it is flat but that first night you pretty much convinced me. I, li I was listening to Crow, stumbled onto you, was like, what the fuck is this? Listened to the clues. It was like, wait a minute. Listened to it again, and then fell asleep listening to it. Woke up. I guess that's when you programmed me while I was sleeping. Went down to the shore because we were on vacation, and I looked up the coast, down the coast, and was like, this motherfucker's right. What the hell? How did we <laughs> miss this shit? So I went home, I told nobody for months and months and months and months, but I was on board like right away. It was nice. just crazy, nice. crazy. Very, very cool. And the first, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Oh, and I was going to say the first, uh, the FEIC 2017, it, I, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, I, I, I slept with you and Karen that that weekend. It was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was fucking awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. I had the best fucking time. It was totally like summer camp, no fucking sleep, just drinking, partying, and hanging out with fucking amazing people. Like, that was that was amazing, just to be there and meet everybody. Yep. And once the Flattoberfest started, it was a whole nother ball game. I mean, I felt it was more... Even though there was almost as many people, I felt it was more intimate. Like I had more time with people to get to talk to people and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. And back to the clues. Just thank you. Thank you again. I, I can't say it enough. Can't say it enough. I mean, it was so many people that watch it because it is Flat Earth 101. It's basic stuff. Here, why don't you use your mind for a fucking second, listen to this, and then you go answer the questions. Yeah. And you can't because it's fucking flat. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I know. I know it sucks, but it's fucking flat. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 Crazy. in, in hindsight, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good. Go ahead. 
Uh, I was just going to say, you fucking called Eric Douchebag. You I swear, <laughs> you. Were, I remember we were talking before, and you're like, dude, if it goes more than 90 minutes, that asshole is going to bury us. Yep. <laughs> like, you fucking called it. I could he see it. it. I could see, see on his face. face one he was turning. Took, it took him that long to get comfortable enough where it's like, yeah, you. Know, well, well, I know what he was thinking, which was, hey, I've got Eddie Bravo as a friend now. Now I don't need these mm-hmm. guys. I I'm on another level. I'm on another league. I'm on I'm a tier up, and it's like I'm gonna take take shots at these guys. And it's like you asshole. Oh, dang it. Whatever. Yeah, he told totally was a jerk. That's fine. And you, well, and you I, called fucking Logan. Yeah, I called Logan. I mean, I when when you told me who it was, I texted my son and I'm like, do you know who this guy is? He goes, that guy is a douchebag, Dad. Stay away from him. <laughs> See, your 12. son too, like, right? My son, same yeah. thing. My the, son was like, that guy is an asshole, and yeah, I was like, the, oh. the kids knew who he was, um, and then most of them didn't have a high opinion of him. I mean, yeah, oh, you were, yeah, they yeah. were all like, screw that no. guy. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, again. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm happy that he's in WWE because now he can just beat the crap. Out, you know, he's gonna. Su- I mean, I, honestly, if he somebody should send him a link to the Mickey Rourke movie, um, I think it won an Oscar. The Wrestler. Oh, ready? I watched that. That was. Oh. Cool. It's like, dude. Oh, yeah. No, n- not no. Look, re- yeah. wrestling, world wrestling. It it, it it scripted as hell, sure, but it is still a physical activity, extreme physical, and you're playing. Well, yeah. And you're doing it way past your prime. Which means you are going to suffer injury after injury, but you got to keep going out there. And I mean, it was a sobering look. I mean, and hell, I mean, the the rumors were were true. You know, Mickey Rourke got juiced up for that. You know, he 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 method he method acted that thing. Yeah, he, it's he like, actually did a really great job. That, he did a like he portrayed job. that role perfectly. Yep, and it was it was. Wow, it was kind of depressing, actually, but it was a very good movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the ultimate ride or die in, uh, you know, the end, it's like you knew when he took that last leap off the turnbuckle. It's like, oh, yeah, he's a dead man. Yeah, he, he'll be dead in a week. So, but whatever. Well, thank Great. you. Thank you, Zulu. Yeah, uh, I mean, you're right. Didn't didn't David Arquette do a fucking wrestling movie, too? David Arquette? And it's to show that... Yeah, to show like it was how brutal it was. I don't uh, remember. I don't know. I have to look it up. I mean, yeah, wrestling. To... It again, it's scripted, yeah, but know. but it's there's only so much they can soften the impacts. I mean, well, you still have to actually do the physical acts. It's like you're it's like you're a stuntman and a live actor. It's like it's like theater stuntman. There you go. Yeah, stunt. Yeah, right? yeah. Talk to any right. stuntman; right. they'll tell you. Which is like, yeah, you can fake a lot of it, but you're gonna get you're gonna hurt a lot. Yeah. You know, you're doing things your body wasn't meant to do. I mean, how many you of them have to be people? able to take a certain sort of impact? Yeah, you know? yeah the the the, the mat concussion you, but again, scripted to no end. <laughs> but with you know, very similar to as you guys know, the NFL and the NBA. But uh, and that's only again because the money got so huge. The but with um, uh, with wrestling, you got to give people what they want. Anyway, long story short, Logan's. <laughs> Dude, if you're gonna stay in that, you better have it like a like an end game, an out strategy, because you do I'm not okay want. to... I'm okay if Logan ends up in a, in a like wheelchair, a probably. Yeah, I know. Ever. I, know. I mean, dude, you could have done. I mean, and his brother so didn't beat his ass with a prime can. Yeah, his his brother didn't choose a better one either. He chose boxing, and it's like, yeah, micro concussions. <laughs> yeah, and well, <clears throat> yeah. 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 Actually, there's a there's a MMA fighter right. who challenged Jake Paul to a fight. He said that guy is a trash human being. Is there any way I can I can actually get in get in a ring and kill this dude and walk away? Like he was <laughs> like literally on Twitter. He's like, how do I end this? How do I end this guy's life and walk? And and all these people are like, <laughs> how do uh, I legally yeah. Kill him? And all these people are replying. They're like, you need to go to this one spot where it's like a gray area. They don't know. Get him in the ring. Spar. Him, blah blah blah. Like there's all these people I who think are 20 like twenty miles off the coast. Work. <laughs> yeah, international people. waters. Oh, it can be done. I mean, but who? You imagine there? like a like a big cruise ship with a big major boxing ring in the center and international waters. It's like fight to the death. <laughs> you lose, you get thrown over. You know that we'll probably happens, Karen. As as much as I'd like to think that well, hostile, it probably 
probably does happen. We don't know. I mean, I, this world is a big place. I mean, and there's I, a lot of rich people with when, too much money and time. Yeah, yeah when I a lot of water out there. Right. Yeah, when, I, when I first realized that the right. hostile movie series wasn't exactly fiction, you know. And it's like okay, probably there's probably a lot of things that the general public doesn't doesn't get access to. I'm sure a lot of it's in international waters or Europe, the dark places of Europe. You know, not necessarily here. UAE. But, yeah, money money does weird things to people. <laughs> they uh, they'll bet on just about everything. Ugh. Anyway, uh, what else what else is going on, Zulu? Anything? Good? But anyway, thank you, thank you, by the way, for um, Zulu, uh, Zulu, let me let me throw out a memory for you really it's quick. Been awesome. Zulu was sure. one of our early, early callers way back in the day. I honestly thought after the first time you called in and was talking to Jonathan, uh, <laughs> that I really thought, because you guys were both oh, exposed, kind of douchey, that. and you were both giving each other crap, and I'm going, this guy's never calling back ever. And yet you kept coming No, back. you fucked up and didn't tell me not to call back. That must have been <laughs> it. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Oh, oh man, I appreciate that too. Being part of this all these years. I mean, you guys have helped me so much. You know, I'm going to read my quote first. Okay. Thank you for being here on our journey. Thank you for being here on our journey. Big, big time, Mark. Like you've kept me calm a lot of times. We've had talks where you're like, hey, "Dude, calm down." <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, you know, I mean, it's been big. You've been so much help to everybody, even fucking people who give you shit. I remember when you did your sports bet commercial, I made a fucking leave Brittany alone video about Mark Sargent. I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, fuck you motherfuckers. Again, oh, yeah. I, I, I was so mad. You, you, like, like Karen said, you've been consistently the fucking straight up dude who's got everyone's back. Thank you. Fuck, fuck the haters. Thank don't, you. I don't, and, they, and again, they I, need throw punches. So there. I, I would, I've said it before and I've said it again, I have not changed this. I mean, not only would I get in a vacuum chamber and let him pull the switch, you know, die for the cause, and which I absolutely would, because it's like, oh, you couldn't be in a martyr for flat earth. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I be, want that on video. That would be sweet. Aaron, you've got a really good camera. Let's do this. But no. I would, <laughs> but I would also let somebody, you know, tie me to a chair. Well, yeah, I did not necessarily tie me to a chair and throw pies. What was that, Karen? Focus. Focus. Oh, Focus. or or throw and throw pies in my face. I thought we weren't talking about tying the, to the chair, Mark. I well, you know what I mean. Um, in as long as I could get the message out there, <laughs> I, which I said, look at the during the sports bet commercial, they asked me to do a take where I said where I renounced it, and I said the world was a globe, and I said, you know, the director and the photographer, you know, all the guys were there. I'm going, yeah, because you would never use that against me ever. I'm going, no, right. never going to happen. It's not in the contract. Right. I don't have to. I don't have to say it. Um, but at the same time, you, you could do all sorts of fun stuff to me. As long as I get to get the flat earth message out there, what do I care? And, and I was right with, with the, uh, behind the curve. You know, I, I helped set the whole thing up and it's like, yeah, was it a hit piece on flat earth? It ended up being, yeah, you bet it did, but it generated so much interest. So, it so much interest. people because I was really upset about it. Yeah. And then I remember very specifically being in, I don't remember what live stream, but somebody showed up in a live stream, a new person and they're like, I watched Behind the Curve and, and like we were just sh trashing that, that yeah. movie. And then somebody showed up and they're right, like, right. I watched Behind the Curve and now I'm curious about Flat Earth. And then I was like, oh. Yeah. I a guess. A lot of people saw it. It could be, you know, that's, you know, you're out of focus again, Mark. Damn it. But like, but, uh, but then that, that made me realize I was like, well, that's crazy. Cause I would have never thought that that would bring anybody to us like that. I thought it made us look like a joke, but when you're, when you're on the other side of it, you know, it looks different from the other side, yeah. you know? And so that's what we have to remember. So I don't, I'm not as ever right. since then I have become less critical of things that I don't necessarily agree with as being put out there on the behalf of flat earth, because, you know, and I've said this a bunch of times, you never know what is going to flip the switch. Yeah. You never know. Everybody's got a different thing that they will connect with yeah. due to some like life experience or however they were raised or however they right. think, whatever it is like you can never, you're not going to be able to predict it. You know, it's just something's going to click one day and they're going to be like, oh, and then they're going to go back and connect it to all the other stuff that they heard or learned or were told or whatever. And that might then 
switch them over but you never know what it's going to be so that's when right. i became so even though i don't like that movie and i don't like the way it was edited and i don't like the way that they represented us obviously you know to for for you know to this day we get oh didn't you guys flat earthers prove that the earth was a ball it's like oh my god you are so dumb but they you're saw so it. dumb that yep. you think a flat earther yeah, proved right the earth right is, right like okay but but so but it did show me that you know it you never know what's gonna flip that switch no, for you, somebody and you bring don't. people and, over. and most producers don't either and that's what think of what it took not only the the only reason it worked was one the producers hated us right none of the none of the people involved in the in the shooting of that movie and the photography of that movie were had anything to do with flat earth and two they didn't they inadvertently made they were the nice movie. when they were in the back of my car going 100 <laughs> <laughs> yeah inadvertently made the movie seem fake for the first 30 minutes they didn't even know they were doing it because i remember i sat with the studio audiences and most of the studio audiences were watching it. it's like oh right these are just actors pretending to be flat earthers mm -hmm. and only 30 minutes in right. did all of a sudden it change and that's a huge hook for anybody where it's like beforehand it's like oh we're watching a fake flat earth movie to where wait a minute all these people are real what am yeah. i watching this is i mean that is a huge it's sort of like a you know one of those those illusion paintings where you're staring at you're staring at all of a sudden you know the woman's face becomes a horse and it's like what where where right, right. When, and then you can't unsee yeah, I it. Saw it with dave and cc and they were all like that you could see the faces because i was watching and they were all like you could tell they they were like oh no and then they're wait a minute this is real yeah and that was the biggest question because they were all going up to dave and asking the questions was is this real is this real is this real yeah absolutely that they 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 messed around like that but i kind of agree with you i i feel power in numbers if power millions numbers. Of people yeah. see it and one percent of them call us holy but, shit that's still a lot of people that you opened up their eyes yeah yeah i mean weiss will tell you um you know he's pro he's done same reason i have which is we've gotten into a lot of classrooms because it's now part of the syllabus. It's required viewing for classrooms, which is like, what? I mean, at all levels, high school, universities, grad students, they're watching this because it's now considered official, quote unquote, official alternative thinking. You know, again, I love the fact that Netflix has street cred to where, oh, no, it's not a YouTube video. It's a <laughs> Netflix movie. Therefore, it's legitimate. It's 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 certified. It's like since when they had nothing to do with it just so you guys know netflix didn't finance this movie right. they bought this movie i know but like you can't put a youtube video on no. netflix or any of these other like cable platforms like it is a completely separate process exactly that's why that's why you haven't seen you know untold origins on youtube because right. they they cannot release it on youtube if they're trying to shop it still right and they want to get it you know considered by a right. serious platform that will market it for them or put it to a huge audience yep you know and so. again i you know i don't i don't want to criticize them too badly untold origins but man come on the blueprint was right in front of you right in front of you all you had to do was follow it and you, you could have done it but it's like all right you just went off and did your own thing it's fine I, mean, I can respect right. that. I, right. I can, I can too. And it, look, they were financed. They, it's not like it, it came out of their own pockets or anything. But uh, come on, there was it was an easy sell. But w w one more thing on that, which is behind the curve, could have absolutely done a sequel, a follow up. Hell, they could have done five, you know, five years later. And they, the the direct for whatever reason, the direct it left. They again, it's not like we fought with them. But you know, to any extent, the only but one after that, which one of who of us would have talked to them after that? I wouldn't have. Good, good point. But they didn't. Even, but the point is, they never even tried. They could have gotten. I mean, I would have. I would have done a follow up with them just, just because. Why not? Right. Trisha may have, uh, maybe. But yeah, Jaron. Oh, good lord, Jaron. I don't know what Jaron would have done. Jaron was pissed, and he was justified. Yeah. And again, a little trivia for you guys. Again, Mad Mike was supposed to be in it. Eric DeBay was supposed to be in it. He was he was like early on supposed to be in it. And unfortunately, you know, Eric's political views were not something they, they wanted to to shop around. Um Matt Boyland obviously was supposed Arrogant, to Arrogant, you hating douchebag. Yeah, thank yeah. you for <laughs> conflating that. Him. 
yeah and uh again um other like da and david could have been in it but he missed he missed the window by a couple months and i think in hindsight he was probably grateful because he didn't have to catch any of the hell for it neither did you karen you didn't have to catch any hell for it because everyone that was in it caught some grief you know jaron my god right, jaron right. caught a lot of hell bob yeah. caught a lot of hell nathan thompson i mean, nathan just kind of rolled with it uh trisha chris pontius actually fucking shit there was a, here's a little little quick trivia for you guys um chris pontius you know they, they they shot a lot of footage down in his his workshop and apparently while they were while they were down there at this this studio during their lunch breaks they would just watch chris build things the raw footage over and over <laughs> they would take their lunch break to this meeting room because they were just fascinated with him building these models and uh i was like really oh. yeah it's like yeah we only use like what 10 minutes of his stuff but we had hours of him building things and we we watched all of it multiple times over they were you know if chris pontius had somebody to help film his stuff and make a youtube channel that would be a killer freaking channel it would and it would get so many views because craftsmanship oh, yeah. videos on youtube like i watch, watch that it. stuff i watch woodworking videos craft videos you yeah. know any sort of i watch mm -hmm. that stuff yeah. you know i'm interested in that so and like any any narrates a little bit while great. he does it and i mean yeah, yeah like like anyone he he would have been like the the bob ross of our community where he was just hip well, there's so many people on YouTube that like right. craft things like woodworkers and stuff. And they, yeah. you know, they make all this cool stuff and their videos just get millions of views. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was glad that Chris was there. There are many too. people making wooden motorcycles. <laughs> he makes some crazy, crazy. Yeah. Things. One, one more, stuff. one more side story for, for the listeners. And I know you guys have, some of you have heard this already which was the one of the other things that came out of that movie was the almost amazing race season where, you know, the television show, the amazing race wanted to do a YouTube version of the amazing race it was only YouTube content, content creators, like, you know, with Shane Dawson, the Paul brothers, uh, you know, who knows, Mr. Beast, maybe back in his early days, crap like that, PewDiePie. And they asked us, they, they called me up and they, they said, Hey, how would you and Patricia like to be uh, in Amazing Race? And, um, oh, okay, well, I swear, I'll wrap this up in two seconds. Um, and I said... Um, I, I was going to say, I'll hurry, Ted. <laughs> yeah, and I said, I said, well, Patricia doesn't really do things. She she stands, she leans, she glides. I go, she doesn't run anywhere. I mean, yeah, she does treadmill, but on camera, I don't think she's going to do it. And they say, okay, you know, could we do you and Bob or blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, it's fine. I go, but the guy, you know, the you want a game show guy, it's going to be Nathan Thompson. I mean, he never shuts up. He would just harass. He would he would torture the other players. It would be awesome. It would be really, really great. And then they asked, you know, they said, we'll watch season 31. And I go, okay, fine. I watched season 31. And I could see in the editing, look, I'm a writer. I, I mean, I can, I can see the plot holes. I'm going, oh, my God, it's scripted. It's absolutely scripted. There's nothing real about the Amazing Race at all. It's absolutely, there is no contest in The Amazing Race. They know the outcome before, before the outcome. And I called them on it. And I said, that's great. I go, make um, make Flat Earth go through the entire season. I don't think we should win. I think we should take third place, not win any money. But I want. I think we should be there at the podium. Make us the enemy where everybody roots against us. And they, and they literally came back. And I know they had to say it officially. They're like, no, 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 it's not scripted. And I go, I go, I go and I and I tried not to be an ass, but I, I couldn't help myself. I mm -hmm. said, okay, mm -hmm. it's not scripted like the WWE isn't scripted, <laughs> right? Because officially wrestling isn't scripted either. And that's when they um right. uh that's when they that's they stopped talking to me. But they ended up picking <laughs> Nathan Tom Nathan Thompson per, per my recommendation and Matt Long. And when they pick those two guys, and, and again, they went, they were going to oh, go, they cool. had their tickets ready to go from the Dallas conference to Los Angeles to do the screen test, which meant they would have been, you know, they would have picked everybody out. Well, you know, they pick everyone. They know exactly who's going to win before this thing's over. And the whole thing crashed around their ears because none of the, everybody else like PewDiePie and, and the Paul brothers, they all wanted to get paid. And it wasn't a paying gig. It was like, no, no, you only get paid if you win. It's like, what are you talking about? We can't be not on the internet for an entire like five weeks. 
we can't do it. And so the whole thing crashed and, you know, Nathan and, and um, Matt would have been fine. So the, yeah, the amazing race almost happened and it didn't. So there you go. That, which would have been a whole like nother thing. Car good. Karen would have hated it. Watching, watching Nathan on the amazing race. Oh God. That would have been. No, yeah, no, I'd have, have watched it tough. and I'd have laughed. That part would have been tough. I watched every episode of Nathan with mm -hmm. that. Remember, remember that that troll, those dudes. God, the... they were folding the toilet paper on the road. Yeah, the toilet paper with the duck suit dudes. Yep. Where they flew him out. They tried to fly you yeah. out, but you tried to fly me out. You, you were too smart. You uh, were like, "Yeah, I'm not doing that." And then they got Nathan, and then they put him in the duck suit. <laughs> not <that one. laughs> Yeah, I watched every episode on the big TV. Ooh. That was comedy gold. <laughs> num 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 num. Don't don't get me wrong. They ate it up. Nathan Nathan is built <laughs> for for a, any sort of clown world type scenario. And the amazing rates. Once I realized it was scripted, I was like, oh yeah, he's your guy. He was absolutely the guy because you could have made him this this villain. You know, this guy that just just because you know he could once he revs up. You can't shut him down. And Matt, Matt would have been the straight man, you know, the good looking straight guy. Oh my god, oh god. Okay, we're we, hey Zulu, we, we got we other callers. We love you, Zulu, but we have other yeah, callers hey, waiting. Yeah, yeah I, real quick, I just I just want to say, hey, I got my Karen Sucks t shirt too. And I wanted to thank Mark for back <laughs> when he pulled the Mark Sergeant and went off the grid. He acknowledged us. I don't know if you remember, because he I I mailed him a flat earth Hershey bar. And he didn't say my name, but you said in, in after the uh, break, you're like, oh, and yes, I got that flat earth chocolate bar and da, da, da. Because literally we were like, is Mark dead? What the fuck happened? <laughs> you yeah. know, you came on because it was repeats, like two or three uh, repeats, I think. Yeah. So right. I just wanted to say thank you for that part. Because yeah, everybody was looking for you, but you still let us know. Love yep. you. Thank yeah, you. Bye, bye, Karen. Love you. Have a good night. All right. See you, man. Have a good one. See you Tuesday. All right. Uh, let's just, we'll just go down the list. This guy's been waiting for an hour. Uh, 513, you are up. What's happening? Hey, Mar Mark, Karen. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, first time caller. I, I listen to your, your Tuesday night shows uh, regularly, but I've never called in. So oh, that's cool. I appreciate that. Uh, Appreciate what you do, and I enjoy listening to both of you. Thank you. Appreciate well, thank that. you. And thanks for listening. Um, yeah, I I guess for me, I I first with thank you for the flat Earth clues. I kind of I kind of got hooked on them. I guess it would have been winter of 2016, 2017. I I always knew the that the moon landing was fuckery. And the whole Twin Towers thing was fuckery. And the thing that really got me digging was I knew something strange was going on with Antarctica. And that's kind of when I kind of started digging. So nice. like that to the flat earth clues, everything kind of opened up for me. So thank you. Very, very welcome. Glad, glad it helped. So um, I don't really have anything else for you. I just wanted to say thank you. And, uh, First time I've ever called in, and uh, I appreciate all you all you two do. Karen, you you have a very good heart, and I I enjoy hearing the things you've said tonight. I think you're kind of a lot like me. You're either there's not a whole lot of in between with people. You're either you either let them on the bus or you kick them the hell off the bus, and that's kind of how I am. So I appreciate that. Thank you. We ain't got no time for no BS. So. <laughs> That's true. So I'll let you go. I know you've got other callers, and uh, um, I appreciate appreciate all of you. And uh, we'll keep listening. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you, you. Have a, you have a good night. Here. Keep it flat. All right. Bye bye. Bye. You know, for his first call, he did fine. Absolutely. He didn't screw up. He didn't have it loud in the background. He he didn't have, wasn't on mute. Very good. Yeah, you could have you could have screwed it up a whole bunch, and he didn't. So good for you. Don't be a stranger. Uh, <laughs> let's pick up. Nobody got time for that. Uh, 928. 928. You're on. 
Hi, guys. I wanted to say that, yes, I will get a hold of Tony Coriolis soon. I'm in northern Arizona and wanted to set up a meetup with him when weather subsides. Oh, okay. Um, Mark and Karen, thank you. You guys, Karen, reserve judgment for a moment, please. Um, you saved me from getting a tattoo. I always wanted to get a full back tattoo with the globe. Ooh. And eagle and a snake fighting on it oh. oh that sounds like military it sounds almost like a uh, marine yeah i wanted something similar but not to like grab and and take credit for military but it was something i thought about when i was like 18 and and uh yeah no that's not gonna happen yet. so thank you <laughs> very welcome <laughs> anything else um that that'll about cut it for now except for that uh i'm trying to get my son to say hi how old is your son he's being a weirdo um all right hello young man hello little hobbit <laughs> you're a hobbit now. <laughs> all right guys all right uh happy birthday flatters clues and uh i'll call in strange world another time all right awesome. thank you thank you have a good one and before you go yep. to the next caller, Mark, thank yes. you. Um, I don't know if that's the real Patricia, but I see Patricia Steer in chat. It says, congrats to Mark. He woke me up with the clues in early 2015. I waited eagerly for the newest ones to come out. Life changing. Thank you, Patricia. Cheers to Patricia. You, know, you are, I you are I, a flat earth legend in and of your own right, my girl. Patricia is, yeah. And again, you could come back into the fold. I have never actually seen anyone, oh, partly because I have the video still on my channel, who could walk back in and people would recognize her pretty quick. She would be she would be one of those female savanniers if she like all of a sudden showed up at something. She would definitely be stealing people's thunder. She would. She would absolutely be on stage and people be like, Did you hear Patricia's here? It's like Patricia who? What do you mean, Patricia? Who? <laughs> um, <laughs> let, me, let me tell a quick, quick story about Patricia. Uh, kind of an embarrassing story on my part. Whereas when I, during my very, very early Strange Worlds episodes, when Jonathan was there, Jonathan and I did a um, end of the world movies comparison where we were um, using cards like War and doing our top fifty end of the world movies and and comparing each other. And it took us two episodes to do it. That's all we did. We didn't take callers. And after the second episode, or the second week, this woman just emailed me out of the blue, named Patricia, and said, hey, just so you know, I own 48 of the 50 movies you, you mentioned. I'm going, wow, that's pretty cool, right? And, and it's like, which was, was weird because I didn't even own the 48 of the 50 movies I'd mentioned. I, I knew of them and I had watched them, but I didn't actually physically own them. She said she physically owned them, and she did. And then it's like, oh, great, wonderful. Hey, really, really cool, thanks. But you know, I was in my own world because I was answering so many emails at the time because everything was new and blowing up. And so months and months later went by, and then uh, you know, Patricia was doing her own early podcasts with a gentleman. She'll have to put his name in chat. A uh, young black guy, good looking, uh, wore a lot of white. If I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I can't remember his name, but because he pulled away. From the from the community because he got a job like a real job and he didn't want to get tied to flat earth you know back in 2015 when you kind of get in trouble for it you know socially and i remember commenting commenting on some of her videos hey great job blah 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 and then she had to remind me later she said oh hey by the way i was went <laughs> some months ago and it was and you know i there, i mean i get a lot of emails so there was a lot of things i forgot i didn't forget that though because no one had ever done that to me no one had ever said oh yeah by the way i have I have your movie list sitting in my living room. It's like, wow, really, really cool. So, yeah, there you go. Patricia Steer. Patricia says she's coming back in April. Really? 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 Wow. That would be amazing, Patricia, if you yeah. are going to be doing stuff again. You should come back. I mean, this year has been just, I mean, again, the mandates have rolled back. Everyone's doing stuff again. It's awesome. Mainstream, so many people are talking about it. Again, we've got so much content out there that there's no excuse for mainstream to avoid it. Well, you know, now's a good time to get into like the whole wood dragon thing 
Oh, oh yeah. I God, I forgot yeah. that what February 10th is. Okay, so February 10th at well, sorry, Karen, go ahead. February 10th right now starts is the start of the Chinese New Year, and to this New Year is the year of the Wood Dragon. Yeah, not only is it the year of the dragon, most people think, oh yeah, Chinese menu, it's the year of the dragon every 12 years. However, it is the Wood Dragon compared to Fire Dragon and Water Dragon and um, Aluminum Dragon. No, right. Well, no, no, but yeah. there's five elements. It's Earth, Water, Fire. fire wood and metal ah got it okay and yeah. so this year is the wood dragon and it rotates every year so because there's 12, 12 there's 12 signs and there's five elements so every five times 12 is 60 so every 60 years it it starts over so it's been 60 years since another wood dragon year and this is the new wood dragon year and anybody who follows chinese astrology um, you would know that the year of the dragon is like the most auspicious year in of of the Chinese zodiac. Like, um, and I only found this out because I happened to randomly be giving birth to a child in the year of the dragon twelve years ago in twenty twelve, right? And then that's when I found out that that it was the year of the dragon, and that there was a lot of people who follow Chinese astrology, and of course a lot of Asia where they actually try to have children in this year because it is the most auspicious year the creativity the drive the ambition the fire like it's just a very powerful sign to be born under nice nice and i forgot what your sign was the i'm a fire snake it's shocking <laughs> i know right <laughs> of course you are of course you are and 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 Stefan is a metal dog. Stefan Carpenter from the Deftones is a metal dog, which is so fitting. Yeah. And Master Gunner Tank Commander Brian Burton is also a metal dog. Also a metal dog. Yeah. Fits. And I am an earth monkey. Yes, you're an earth monkey. But it's a great that's that's I uh, it's it's cool. No, no, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Hey, how many earth monkeys are out there? I don't know. But uh, and and you read it off. You read off all the details of Earth Monkey. And it's like, yeah, you know what? It fits. So I'm not going to complain. It fits 100. percent And you know what the best part too about it is? What being uh, Earth Monkey? No. When Tony Coriolis, who is the is the one who kind of got me got us this whole Chinese astrology um kick started because he calls into my coffee talk about it a lot. Right. But then he pointed out that the snake. And the monkey are secret friends. Oh, we're secret friends, Mark. That's pretty nice. But do you even know what the secret friends thing is? I don't, but I bet you're going to tell me. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? But the whole point of secret friends is like, when you're down and out and when like you think like the world is against you or you're having your hardest times your secret friend will come in and be like, you know what? I'm having a great time. Everything's great for me. And I'm going to give you some of my good energy. I'm going to pull you out of those dark times. You know? I like so that. it's like, I feel like that's pretty appropriate. That is appropriate. It's you nice. know, because like, because I feel like you and I have each other's back. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know about you having my back, but I definitely have your back. I have blocked so dozens of people on Facebook because they came on my Facebook page and tried to tell me that you were a shill. And I was like, banned for life. <laughs> You're all banned for life. And I tell people to avoid upsetting Karen at all costs or suffer the un unquenchable burning wrath. <laughs> it's Karen's <laughs> fury. Secret friends. Secret friends. It's really nice. Uh, you know what? Let's pick up. Yeah, well, he's been on hold for 40 minutes. Let's pick up. Uh, okay. Renee. While what? we're talking, though, I just want to let people know, because I'm sure people want to know, like, what am I? What is my sign? Blah, blah, blah. For oh, where to look it up. Technology. Right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to screen share mode right now. And right now on the screen share, I have a chart 
So look up your year and it will tell you um, what, what you, what you are. You look at your year and you guys figure it out because I'm sure there's a bunch of people who will be like, I, what am I? What am I? You know, people always ask that when you start yeah, it's talking year, about it. It's year, it's month and it's sign. You could, you could also look yeah. it up on. But I, well, I'm, I have a chart on the screen right now. So anybody okay. who wants to know while Mark and I are talking, I don't know if you're going to get any other calls. Is there any other callers waiting? On the uh, I do have a couple. That's fine. I can I can pick them up. Can't I? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Do whatever you're going to do. Right, if you're interested in looking and knowing what your what your uh, Chinese zodiac animal and element are, look on the screen, look at your year, figure it out. Yeah. All right. Go you ahead. can also you can also just so you know you can google uh what is my chinese element sign and it and it should and it'll say okay what year were you born what well, month chinese zodiac and element it's it's yeah. actually you have to look for both otherwise it'll just tell you the year but it's also on the screen right now you don't have to go anywhere just look all on right, the screen right. do what karen tells you do what karen tells you to do <laughs> All the time all right 818 what's happening renee down in huntington beach california hey how are you guys hey what's happening man we're just hey. checking in uh, we are here celebrating uh, we're having a few flat earthers here visiting here and uh, it's a happy flat today on our beautiful non-rotating flat earth in the center of the whole universe nice thank you so much for saving us from the spinning ball deception and I'm so happy that I uh, we're now in this new paradigm, enjoying uh, all the blessings of uh, visualization and having new friends, you know. And uh, according to the uh, Chinese calendar, I'm a snake. You are. Nice. Me too. Yeah. Do you know what kind of snake you are? No, here I have some friends that want to say hello to you. Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. Hello. It's your secret friend, Mark. Oh my God! DJ, hey! <laughs> oh my God! Guess who's hanging out? <laughs> I saw you on the phone line uh, earlier, and then I saw you drop off, and it's like, why did he drop off? It's like because he's next to Renee. <laughs> That's why. Uh, did you get that? I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna see who you're gonna pick up. But Renee had been holding forever. I was like, I'll just, <laughs> I gotta just surprise Mark. Oh, uh, that's... yeah, we're excited that it's happy nine years. Nine years, yeah. Thank you, that's DJ. Right. Yeah. We so have some uh, Cuba Libres here with some rum, and just we have Antonio also. Yeah. Was... Didn't didn't I just do a promo for hey, this... for next month? Didn't hey, I do... hey there. Who's this? No, that's not. For any, is, is Antonio. Hey, Mark, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, 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 good. We met at Rene. We have been chatting a few times. Uh, were you saying that you made a, a promo for Rene or your, or for today? No, no, I did a promo for Rene. No, 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 this is just uh, an impromptu uh, event. Oh, okay. Wait, how did, how did DJ get invited to an impromptu meeting down in Huntington Beach? Here we go. Was was he on? The... Why are you so surprised, Mark? Well, yeah, are, are you? So you a... DJ, yeah, exactly. I'm taking offense for you. Why wouldn't he be invited, Thank you, Karen? <laughs> That's true. He's the best looking yeah, guy. I got ever. connections you never knew before. <laughs> well, you must. DJ you must was be in Vegas. Renee was in Vegas. Listen, bonds are made at my events. That is true. That is true. <laughs> you know what? And and, and you're right. If if however, gonna... go ahead. No, Renee was the basically one of the first meetups I ever went to, and then I we became you. buddies. And then when I met you, I'm at the I'm at the house where I met you for the first time, Mark. Oh, it's so nice. That's where I got um, uh, the coat, the famous DJ coat. Exactly. We wish you were here, hanging out. We were just reminiscing. Oh. No, but Renee invited me up because I uh, had some flatter stuff of his, and I needed to give it back to him because from one of the meetups and so he invited me over now we're just hanging out and it happens to be flat earth day flat earth clues day flat earth clues day. yes well thank you that's that is awfully nice yeah and then, yeah i was a little sad when you dropped off the call board it's like oh crap what happened but uh, now, mystery solved the beat i'm sorry that's all right that's all right you can make it up to me later 
I'm totally fine. I will, I will. But Karen also wanted to tell Karen that we love her as well. And uh, I've been listening to Coffee Talk, and it's like being a mom and doing all the things that she does. Karen, you also are just such a rock star in my eyes and love you to death. So just it's, it's a great day for both of you. Thank you, DJ. I appreciate that. You are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Well, hey, we don't want to take up too much of your time, but we wanted to call in, and we we're excited just to tell you we're hanging out, and we miss you guys. And hopefully we'll see you here this year, Mark, to get, get down to the beach. Right on, right on. Anytime. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, guys. You too. Have a fun, and we love you so much. Take care. Thank you, Renee. Have a good one. Renee. See. Shout you out too. to Bye -bye. SoCal. Yeah, such a great community, by the way, down there. Yes. They, uh, they, uh, you know, they do a lot of stuff that people don't know. I mean, they were doing street activism when other people weren't. Uh, you know, they were one of the first groups that would like put on lab coats. And go down to the boulevard <laughs> and again that was one of my points that i put out there i go all you have to do is wear a white lab coat hold a clipboard you'd be amazed how many people will talk to you you know just because they because they subconsciously think oh some intelligent person is doing a study that then they want to talk to me i mean you know take off the lab coat try to hand out flyers good luck you know trying to hand out flyers put a lab coat on and you don't have a camera on you people lose it it's like, oh, this is great. Intellectual discussion. Awesome. Uh, let's pick up. You know what? We're going to pick up this guy because he's pretty cool. 425. I know who this is. Hi, Mark. <laughs> hey, Ted. Hey, by the way, I love I love the fact that you're still using your, your Washington number. For those of you who don't know, 425 is a, um, uh, a Washington area code, Washington State. So, yeah. Well, you know, I still have my Sacramento number. I haven't lived in Sacramento for two decades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, and I, again, we're, we're all, I think. I had the same cell number for like 20 something years. Yep. Yeah, I've got, I've got. My, I'm going uh, for a record. Oh, I've got my Cal, my oh, California. I've got my Colorado number, my 303 number that I've had for um, 303-494-6631. That was the only number I had in Colorado. And I had to, and I, by the way, just so you guys know, I hate cell phones, but the only way I could take my phone with me was, you know, because they don't transfer landlines is to, they said, no, you got to transfer your line to a cell phone and then just drive it out of Colorado. It's like, are you serious? So yeah, that's when I got my very first, I got my first smartphone in 2015 when I drove out of Colorado. Yeah. So. And now the phone companies are trying to phase out landlines, which are the lines that will still work if the power goes out. So yeah. Basically, they're trying to make it so if the power goes out, you have no you have no phone connection. Where that used to be your only outside connection if the power went out. That always wigs. That always wigged me out. By the way, you know, because I grew up in an island where everybody had landlines, right? And well, we all used to have landlines. That right. used to be how it was. But you're upset. Yeah. Gen Xers. Right, Gen Xers. That's right, Gen X baby, the forgotten, <laughs> the forgot the the one that's always seems to be exempt. From everything else people fight you know millennials and gen z and boomers gen x just for whatever reason they, they they're exempt and, uh, and, but, and interesting and and just a side note mark isn't uh, it interesting now that like everything is being called such and such x space x disease yeah. x x.com good point i That's didn't even think of that weird. i i didn't either until just now we yeah. started talking about we're gen xers and we're like the last like independent like the real like go getter sort of generation. Yeah, the the, you know the technology I mean? didn't completely corrupt us. That that whole group. Yeah. 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 It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And so now everything is called XXX. Maybe they're coming for us. They're trying to like dig us in. That would be. I neat. don't know. Maybe. Anyway, sorry, Ted. Sorry, Ted. Oh, What's hey, sweetheart? I love you. Hi, oh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, but I can't say it on air. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Mark. It's always Skype. Wait, are we still streaming? Anyway. Oh, crap. I thought so. This, this is not the only fans, is it? No. By, by the way, one of my one of my fond memories anyway. of, of you, Ted, you know, was one of the, I think it was the one, was it down in Burien? Crap. That first meetup where um, Dennis showed up. That was like his first meetup. That was Burien. 
Yeah, I was period. And was Dennis, period. if you guys don't know, Dennis is a lot better than he used to be as far <laughs> as being a, a, lo a loquacious speaker. He's way better now than he used to be. Beforehand, <laughs> if you opened a conversation with him, there was no off switch. He he would just go into <laughs> you know, yep. all sorts, and he wouldn't even preface it like Ted and I joke about now, which we won't get into. He wouldn't preface it. He would just start going into Eastern Orthodox philosophy from the 17th century, you know, and, and if you weren't careful <laughs> sitting there for a while and uh, no, don't get me wrong. I love Dennis, but yeah, he has come a long way. He is. Uh, I mean, there's oh. one of the most book smart people I know. Anyway, there you go. Smart little. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a uh, congrats on clues con and you know it's been awesome getting to meet you at all various uh flat earth meetups up and down the puget sound and yeah uh old 2019 dallas and all that good stuff yeah yeah it's been it's been awesome and uh yeah. you know you you've been i, I, I love i love that you know the fact that you've been you've been by karen every step of the way and and you were part of everything that was in Vegas. Uh, I know you suffered a lot <laughs> working the door, but you, you didn't yeah, crash you know. and, and burn. I was still alive. It was, I, I, Ted I just, is a trooper. Ted is like my rock. I love Ted because he, he's always anything I ever ask him to do. He just does it. He's amazing. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, cool, Ted. Wish Mark would do that. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you catty bitch. One night in Seattle and all. <laughs> no, right? You know what, I, though? Oh, no, I'm not going to well, say Well, no, no. I was, but just so you guys know, I was a little sad when, when Ted moved out of the Northwest. But when I found out where he was going, I was like, oh, well, I can't be too mad. I was angry. No, oh. oh. Thought we had something, Ted. Waiting for Mark to send out the drone strike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I can't drone strike you now because uh, Tuesdays would be ruined. Yeah, no, you hit. You just chance to hit Karen too. Chance. Pretty pretty good chance. It's not like I can isolate to the room. We're not that good. Wait, did I say we? Anyway, what else? What else do you have, Ted? No. Anything? Oh wow! Oh shit! Not really. I finished my performance at the at the Y. I mean, Chippendales, mm. whatever. Yeah, it was a ball. Oh. Either one. Oh, is it? Um, I was figuring. Yeah, are you guys doing? Um, crap! I forgot the name of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. The the whole it's a yeah the Chippendales review at the Y. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Most That's most right. most of the swim team, the divers. Okay. Yeah, guys with zero body fat and almost mm -hmm. no no body hair. Wait, you've got some body hair, don't you? Yes, Ted has a beautiful hairy I chest, do. and well, I love it. Well then, <laughs> yeah, I've never been a body hair guy. Just You're there. not not my thing. <laughs> if I design, if I had to design, it's going to sound weird. If I had to design people in the next version, uh, or at least myself, I would wipe out hair from the nose down. Well, nose hair you know, need. I'm not against it, about, but I hey, have I to like say, my beard. I like Ted's beard, and I like his hairy chest. Feels good. It feels better when the man has a hairy chest. It's not like two sweaty bodies like sticking to each other. That hair is like a, it's like a nice fuzzy buffer. I like it. Yeah, you gotta say that first part again. <laughs> the sweaty bodies sticking together. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That that's so unattractive. Fuzzy bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yep. Again, for anyone's out there. Oh, shit. I am single and sometimes suffering. Oh, right. oh, that reminds me. By the way, I what? didn't get to talk about it yet, but. What? Mark, do you know what I did oh, today? God. No, you didn't sign me up for some sort of dating app, did you? No, no but oh, okay. oh my gosh, you're so close. I have finally set up hosting for my dating website. It's called tinfoilhatlove.com. Really? I, I am finally starting 
my website for awakened minds when you can't date normies anymore when you need to find your partner for the apocalypse when you really want to get it on so to speak when it's time, when it's time to make you know beautiful natural um babies natural born child children of zion with no vet no um jibby jabs <laughs> i'd say you almost said it and and no poison yes it is coming tinfoilhatlove.com and i am going to have accompanying streams with it if you join the website if you're single and you're looking for um a significant other of the same mind frame as you this will be your place to go and i will be giving discounts to my events for singles and all that good stuff yes tinfoil hat love you know what i may sign up for this yes yes and I, i'm gonna i have big plans for this well i'll be able to like feature people um i want to do streams where we can get like a featured single and and you know i really want this is this is like a like a passion of mine that it's been going on for quite some time now like you know i try to include i've been trying for a few years to incorporate like singles events in singles things into my events so i can get people together and i can get you know because you know when you have this sort of outlook on on the world like you can't you can't date norms anymore you got to get with somebody who sees the world the way that you do who that you can spend your most intimate moments with and really connect with on those key things in life such as we don't live on a ball <laughs> in the vacuum of space we don't live on a soggy space pair so anyway that's what I want. I really want to help my people connect with others. I want to make flat earth couples and I want my flat earth couples to make beautiful, natural born, untouched, unpoisoned children to repopulate the earth. Yes. That's what's up. <laughs> anyway. Mark, are you still here? What happened to Mark? Mark. Uh oh. Mark Sargent. Oh, he walked away. I think he had to go pee pee. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Well, well, no, we're we're coming up on three hours. There's only so. so I know, long. I know. It's it's a long stream, and I just okay. wanted to make sure. I know you probably want to go soon. And, well, no, and no. Let's let's pick up the last last couple of callers. Ted, I got to say goodbye to you. Call me later, and by that I mean you know send me pics. Um. And then uh, we'll we'll chat. Right, hot text. Right, yes. hot text. All right, see you, man. Uh, let's pick up. We'll, we'll do these last two, and then Not we'll. a valid we'll menu it. option. What? What? What happened? What are you doing? I didn't hit anything. Okay. Well, anyway, all of the people who were on my um single, my flattered singles list, I'll email you when when the site goes live. I'll announce it when the site goes live. I have to work on it in the background, but I did set up hosting. The URL is set. Like, I really want to do this. I really want to help my people find other people and fall in love and have relationships and live a happy life. And, you know, seriously, this is this is what it's all about. This is what we are here for. A so. noble cause, Karen. I love Absolutely. It, it I love is it. my mission in life to perpetuate as many flat earth babies being made as possible. Wow. I want to be the flat earth grandmama to all flat earth babies being born. You know me kind of like a <laughs> like a den mother. Well anyway, let's yeah. look, let's pick up all about uh, it. All right. <laughs> we'll do these last two. 509 you're on. Hey, uh hope you can hear me okay. A uh, short time with their uh first time caller. Love cool. the show. I can hear you. Um, hey, my name is Joe. Um, I'm 509, but I'm not in 509 anymore. I recently moved down to Tampa, Florida. So, oh, wow. um, I'm loving it down here, getting out of the, of the cold winter. So, um, Karen and Mark, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. Fantastic. Good. Good, good. Well, um, I guess I could just tell you a little about, about myself because I'm a pretty recent flat earther. Um, October 2022 is when I finally decided to look into the ridiculous theory. And 
so uh, you know, I was a libertarian in like 2012 um, from Ron Paul, and then I became an anarchist shortly after that. And then um, 2019, I went to my second Anarchapulco down in Acapulco, Mexico, and I brought my brother along, and he's not really a truther or anything. Um, but it was it was a fun time. And so he actually ran into some flat earthers there. And uh, I did not, but he was like, oh, man, I ran into these flat earthers. And he's like, you know how, you know, it's so easy to disprove the globe. And, you know, you can watch the sunset, you can lay down, and then you can, like, stand up and watch it again. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, yeah, I guess that sounds legit enough. And then I, you know, didn't look into it until, you know, another few years later. Um, but so, yeah, then I got down the Tartaria rabbit hole in 2020. I was just looking for stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Benny Wills. Um, he does poetry. He did this. He also did Joy Camp, which is like a comedy sketch. Um, oh, I know Joy Camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joy, Joy, yeah. Joy Camp did a thing on us. I remember that a few yeah. years back. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's awesome. I, I've met him down there, and he's actually been up to Northport, where I was at um, previously, too. So, um, anyway, so, um, yeah, so, uh, now I forget where I was going, but um, I was going to say, um, yeah, so I finally looked into it. I looked into Dave Weiss's stuff because that's why Tartaria um, was autodidactic. He had Dave Weiss on a couple of times, so I knew the Dave Weiss name. So I started watching his interviews and it took, you know, yeah, a week, maybe two. And I was like, yeah, pretty sure the earth is not a globe. And then I was hanging around some like freedom people there. Um, that was in New Hampshire at the time. Um, because I just was at this porcupine festival, which is like one of the biggest freedom festivals up in New Hampshire. And so anyway, yeah, I, I just talked to somebody at the campfire and he's like, oh yeah, flutter. So yeah, I looked into that. It's like, yeah, that's ridiculous. And I'm pretty sure it's just another person who was dissuaded by the flat earth society. That's probably, you know, he just probably went there and just, you know, gave up after that. But, um, yeah, anyway, so I'm happy that it's, I'm happy that Dave Weiss is, gonna be talking about this at anarchapulco um i know that the creator of anarchapulco has already been questioning the globe for years um there's a bunch of other um if you're talking to flat earthers jeff, that are going to speak there so, uh, jeff jeff berwick is a flat earther he's flat yes jeff berwick yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, I mean, he talked about it. I mean, he's talking about it. I don't know. I, I haven't watched him in a few years now, but I remember he's brought it up like, I don't know, four, four or five years, more well, years ago. I don't know, quite a, quite you, a long time if ago. You, so. Okay, well, I'll just tell you. If you watch his little walk and talk videos that he does with Lucy and it's and the little yeah. icon at the bottom, if you watch it, it's a little flat earth map. Nice. And it's been cool. that way for okay, a while. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, I love those <laughs> walk and talk things. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, and I'm just waiting for it to spread more in the freedom movement because, you know, I kind of thought I was in the truth movement being in the freedom movement. But, you know, because I started down, you know, searching for truth and, you know, learned, uncovered a lot of lies about about starting about like weed and then starting about, you know, libertarianism and anarchy and like government and economics and, uh, you know, socialism, communism, all this sort of stuff. So, um, uh, so I'm I'm excited. I mean, so so anyway, I was thinking that I was in the truth movement, but I was really in the freedom movement. And it's now that I'm anyway, I'm, I'm glad that it seems like the two, the two parts are kind of coming together, kind of weaving together more. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We got a, we got a bright future ahead. Mm -hmm. Right on. Right on. Absolutely. Cool, man. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Um, I'm loving the meetups. I'm going to shout out Shelly. Um, I've been to her meetup twice now down here. Um, I loved it uh, so far. So we'll oh, find out. Oh, Shelly in, in cool Florida. Are you in Florida? Yeah, he's in Florida. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yep. So I'm from I'm in Tampa right now, but it's you know, so it's a three or three and a half hour drive over there, but it's definitely worth it. I stay the whole weekend, and um, yeah, it's awesome. Campfires. You know, we got the pre the pre meetup meetup, and then we got the meetup, and then we got the post meetup meetup. So it's always fun. So it's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll get you out there sometime, Mark. Um, we yeah, threw the idea out, but it's, it's nothing, nothing yet. But we'll, we'll, I'd love no. to see you out here. So no worries. No cool. worries. All right, man. That's about it. Oh, last thing is, I uh, I guess I'm a water rooster, 
Um, so that's my, my sign and my, my zodiac tick. So yeah, whatever that means, but yep. <laughs> well, you should look into it. And, it might, yeah, be, that's it might be interesting. Water rooster sure. is actually pretty interesting because water and rooster is not two things I consider to be like, like a rooster and water. That's just two things that don't seem they like, like, the, yeah. like they go together. So you might have, you might have an interesting chart. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. I'll look into that. Water Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right. Um, well, you two have a great night. Thanks for taking my call. All right. Have a good night. Cheers. Take care. See ya. The 509 area code, where he came from, would have been um, Spokane. Okay. We got one call left. Then we'll call this. It is going to be from possibly San Jose, California. Oh, is that me? Oh. yeah it is hey, well so the pressure's on man <laughs> yes 408 and just as a little bit of a preface i have two friends right now boyfriend and girlfriend they're on the fence standing right in back of me uh -oh. and actually they've been watching a lot of this um, and they're on the fence with flat earth so I'm just letting you know that they don't want to come online or anything like that or say right. anything at all. what's but holding them right up what's the biggest hold up uh, well let, let me ask you are they are they scientists? Are they like do they do post grad work in some sort of physical uh, field? Are they you know high one intellect? is an accountant, the other one works in construction. Huh. Ah, yeah. they'll be flat earthers real right. soon. Yeah, they'll both we'll, work with numbers. Numbers yeah, don't, don't lie. Don't, don't too long. <laughs> yeah, we'll get them. I'm not going to look over my shoulder and see what their faces are saying at the moment. But uh, so uh, what what can what can we do um, for you? But anyways. Go ahead. Say again. Go ahead. You're good. Okay. Um, but by the way, Mark, I've already told you this before uh, that I first heard about Flat Earth from you in 2015 from the George Nori thing. And then, ironically, you were the very first Flat Earther I met in Vegas out in the Secret Garden kind of area as you were one person in line in front of me. Oh, right. I was checking in at registration. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, I shook your hand and I was like, and I asked you, like, where is the freaking conference going to be? And you're like, oh, it's going to be up there. And you pointed up to it. I was like, oh, thank you very much. Right on. <laughs> right, there. right on, man. I know I, I would have come up and talked to you a lot more, but I think you couldn't walk more than about four or five steps without being bombarded with 50 different questions. It was difficult. It was I, I will tell you that much. And um, yeah. yeah, but it was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed that that conference a whole lot. I, I needed that one. So it was fun. Oh, it was amazing. I'll, I will never miss one again. And Karen, I don't care where you can put it down in like Argentina. I'll be there. <laughs> but uh, either either way, uh, in regards to that, I've been talking to a lot of people online, whether you know, it's mostly just discord, but there's a lot of people down in Florida. They're asking where the next event is going to be. And I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, oh, it's got to be in Florida. You know, October has really great weather for Florida. And if it's going to be in October again. So I'm just not really sure if you have a, a semi-confirmed location yet. I got a funny feeling it's going to be in South Carolina. I, I mean, well, nothing's been finalized that's... yet. Nothing's been finalized yet. Um, okay. So. Uh, I, got a, I got a funny feeling you're going back to your roots on this one. Well, I tried to, but my <laughs> I I called the Shrine Club, but my weekend is booked, Mark. Oh, so go well. What weekend would, would that have been? The last weekend of the the second to the last weekend of October, the the weekend before um, Halloween. That's when I usually do it. Is the third weekend, and they're booked. So I'm not. I'm actually not sure. I don't have a place finalized yet. I'm in the process. You and I probably should talk about that. Okay, because there's a lot of people that are okay. asking me because they want to show up, but they don't want to. I know. You know you're, after, you're talking about after, the, after you know, I did the hours. event in Vegas, I got a lot of people who were like, "I heard so many good things. When's the next one? When's the next one?" And I'm like, "Man, I've been doing this for five years. Where y'all been?" So you're you're you were talking but, about the weekend of the 18th and again. The, yeah, the twenty around the twentieth <laughs> is usually when it is. All right, I'll. Okay. People that are not aware of it, that takes a lot of planning. And my gosh, how many people are involved in that? And Karen, yes, Queen Bee, you are amazing for doing this. And I think a lot of people can do nothing except tip their hat to you and just give you hugs. You 
have definitely been, you know, creating roads for a lot of people. Yeah, she crushed it. It was awesome. Um, so I, uh, I'm gonna. This is a flat Earth actual thing, yes. and I've had some help with this, even though I'm halfway through reading the actual manual. The U.S. Army um, artillery manual, sure. 654 pages. Now, granted, there's like 15 pages. It's just like um, nonsense with the table of contents and whatnot. Right. But then I had someone, uh, Saint Saint Pierre, who actually ran it through an AI filter, giving it a whole bunch of command prompts, and there's not a single thing about Coriolis, Earth curve, or rotation at all. Yeah. Not in the entire manual. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that confirms... Was, when I hear Globe Earth, or, oh yeah, I read that. I'm like, oh really? Yeah. The manual. Yeah. <laughs> The um the artillery guy that I interviewed woof back at least eight years ago now, um he confirmed that you know he was firing cannons out at you know whatever it was twenty twenty five miles unclassified, and he told me the same thing every other military guy told me, which was the Coriolis effect, otherwise known as the spin and the curvature of the Earth, are not factored into any firing solutions ever, and even. He said, even if you could find something in that book, by the way, you know, I don't, that book probably won't have it. He goes, oh, he's seen tables that show some sort of, you know, math that covers that. He goes, we don't use it. We absolutely ignore it. In fact, uh, I, I don't want to drag this out, but, you know, Master Gunner, Brian Burton, he was the one of the guys that, that pointed out very early. He said, do you know how hard war would be <laughs> if we had to take into account the spin of the earth and the curvature? He goes... He goes, we, you'd have to stop. You'd have to stop and look up on a map. Not only would you have to look in the curvature, but you'd have to figure out where on the map you were because the spin would be different depending on your, your, your latitude. Mm -hmm. He goes, he goes, we, well, no, we just line it up and we freaking shoot it and we're accurate a lot. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Our artillery guy, you bet. Uh, missiles, all of them. Yeah. I'll send you the entire manual too, but I know that there was, I can't remember who it was. Was it Brian Burton that was at yeah. the festival? Yep, but Brian he Burton. He, he no, was he, 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 was, he wasn't at Vegas, but he was at Dallas. Yeah, I wanted to walk up to him. And... Oh, no, there was the other master gunner that did a previous presentation, though. Oh, you're talking about Corey Kell. I, yeah, I think it's, yeah. He was also, you know, retired U.S. Army. Yeah, And was Corey also Kell. a gunner as well, like mm -hmm. artillery. Nice. Yeah, I saw him there. He was dressed in, like, in like a suit and everything. But, um... I, I don't think. Yeah, it's, I, peanut, what I'm going through, trying to do my own research on it. Though. No, Peter, P Peanuts, um, armor. He's tank. Yeah, he he's very, um, yeah. specific. Yeah. Yeah, and I was in the Navy too, so I didn't, never one, not a single time that I ever hear about Earth curve or rotation the entire time I was in the Navy. So, no. no. Um, and then I Mark, I do have a private a... question. I'm going to send you an email about a private question. Ooh. Uh, because I don't want to ask it on there. Private. Well, it's because people have been asking me uh, something. I'm like, ah, I don't really know if I want to ask Mark that. They're like, but they keep pressuring me to do it. I'm like, eh. and I don't believe it, by the way. I'm, but you'll see in the email, okay? All right, no, ask ask me whatever. Um, Just ask it now. No, if it's private, <laughs> he can ask. I mean, he can. No, no he can it's, not, it's really not appropriate at the moment. Okay, no, email email to me. I'll Sorry I'll answer. Say, I, probably I, I, not. I try true. to bite my tongue as much as I can. It's probably not true then. But also, Dr. Law started a Discord channel that we get together on about once per month, maybe twice per month. So it's, and I think he was trying to do that tonight. It's all flat earthers, it's nothing hostile or anything like that. So you might want to inquire with him about what that is. It's invite only. So nice. Be interested. You know, Dr. It's a way Law to shoot the shit. Discord, like yeah. right now. But okay. yeah. Very cool. And he usually sends out text messages. Yeah. So, um, anyways, Mark and Karen, I hope you have a very wonderful night tonight, and the rest of your week is just as well. Why, thank you. So, I was trying to do the ASMR thing. I'm not very good at that, though. But, anyway, oh. thank you very much for having me on, All right. and until next time. Till next time what? Till next time what? Well, until the next time I call in. <laughs>
you're killing me. Well, the next time we meet. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's like, no, until you're next like, time, dot, 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 right? Until next time, and I was like waiting for something else. No, so that's right. All right. Thank you, thank you. You'll you'll be our last caller. So All thank, right. you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Cheers. No, you're good. All right. See you, man. Have a great night. Yep. And uh, yeah, as far as ASMR, Karen and I could do a clinic on that. Unfortunately, Karen is dating because if you start ASMR, oof, things get pretty heated. Oof. Potentially. Oof. <laughs> oof. Karen. <laughs> All right. I guess that's the end of our. Um... What is this? I don't know. What the hell is it? Well, I gotta look Clues at the thumbs. enters the year of the dragon. It's a nine year anniversary of the Flat Earth Clues, and you get to hear Mark and I, you know, reminisce and talk about what's been going on over the years and just chit chat and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. It's fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it happens to be also the beginning of the official Chinese New Year, Year of the Dragon, and it's the Wood Dragon. You're the Wood Dragon. The so, wood dragon. so yeah there you go if anyone has never checked out the flat earth clues which is very possible since it's been nine years you know just look it up either on my channel or type in i mean the the big videos it's funny the i'll end with this the the videos that really put me on the map were had nothing to do with flat earth clues the guys that compiled it all one's called they are hiding god with the biggest lie ever they are hiding god with the greatest lie ever and under the dome full documentary my name's not in it. Flat Earth Clues isn't anywhere in the title. People just made it. They got millions of hits, made thousands of dollars. Good for you guys. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Karen, for, for doing this. And Karen and I will be, well, Karen, her next thing will be Monday, right? Yes, Monday. I will be doing another episode of Coffee Talk, Yep. which yeah. is a call-in show. Same phone number. Yep. which will be early on Monday morning, East Coast time. Yes, 9.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, 6.30 a.m. Pacific. Yep, when I'm still sawing yeah. wood over here. And then Tuesday, Karen and I are going to be doing Strange World, which will be 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. So don't miss that. So there you go. There you go. Um, and we really appreciate everybody who watches our streams and supports us. And yeah. thank you, everybody, for being part of the flat earth cause yeah yeah and mark Sargent is my nigga <laughs> is that the end of the stream that is the end of the stream nice i gotta stop recording <laughs>